What's up, what's up, everybody? We are motherfucking back. But before anything, August 14th, Irving Plaza, we will be in the building, and it might be for the last time in a long time. Without getting into the bullshit, come out, get those tickets. There's tickets left. We got the homeboys from fucking California, Lionheart, and my brother's count time, and we got come bust in the motherfucking building. So get those tickets while you can. And remember, the Smoking Word podcast is always brought to you by CasaTheRock.com. And for all my European brothers and sisters out there, CasaTheRock.eu. We just dropped brand new slides. They just came out the other day and they're almost gone. So go get them while you can and stay tuned. We're about to drop a lot of new stuff. <clears throat> Every T-shirt is $21. That's how we're doing it. So CasaTheRock.com, U.S. only, and CasaTheRock.eu, worldwide. Shout out to Theo and, and, and GSR out there. But um, also, big, big, big shout out to my Patreon family for holding me down. I took a couple of weeks off, and again, the, the fam holding me down is making things happen behind the scenes, but um, we got a lot of shit planned. Um, shout out to all my patrons who've been holding me down and, you know, supporting the show. If you motherfuckers out there don't know what it is, I'm going to tell you again. Patreon is a way you can fucking support and invest in the show. If you like killing time with your boy, go to patreon.com slash the smoking word. Again, patreon.com slash the smoking word. That's how you support the show. You could invest, you could throw two dollars, five dollars, ten dollars. We offer a lot of behind the scenes shit, and everything goes back into the show to keep shit going because um nothing's for free, even the smoking word. But um, again, shout out to my Patreon family. Listen, I love you guys. I love everybody who's been tuning in and all that good shit. So um also um I want to shout out uh, Gerard, yeah, Gerald Birch. Ross Miller, Sean McClellan, Jonathan Sandoval, and Rob Liddy. Yo, welcome to the fam. And everybody out there, you know where to follow me. Hoyer Rock 357 on Instagram. The Smoking Word Podcast on Instagram. If you got anything to ask us, anything you want to hear, hit us up on there. If you're a new band, send your music there or send it to Busky. Shout out to Busky out there. But make sure you subscribe. Listen. Subscribing is free for all you cheap fucks out there. So, but on the real, I want to thank everybody who's been reaching out. It's been some crazy times. I've been feeling the love. I'm lucky to have family all around the planet. I felt the love. I love everybody out there who's been reaching out. You know who you are. And I want to just say this and everything else I do is dedicated to my brother, Dave. So let's give him a moment of silence. I love you, David. For my, that's for my big brother. I wouldn't be doing any of this hardcore shit if it wasn't for him. But we decided to do something a little different on this episode. Um, a lot of people been reaching out to me, you know, um, asking me about my lifestyle change and about, you know, you know, working out and, you know, what got me into, you know, um, changing my life around and all that good shit. Um, I'm not no fucking um, uh, PMA, John Joseph Morse PMA guy, but shout out to them. But um, I definitely have a story, but I'm one of these people that um, as much as I love talking shit, I don't like really talking shit about myself. I like finding out about other people. But um, we decided to do something different. My brother, Truth, has a podcast. Go to, make sure you subscribe to the, the Big Truth podcast. And basically, um, he did a, a, a podcast. I did a podcast with him a couple of months back. And basically, um, I think it was the best 
uh, interpretation of my story. And I figured um, instead of me trying to relive that, I figured we do the smoking word, big truth mashup. And um, we're going to broadcast we're, we're broadcasting that episode right now to basically get, you know, you could basically get a little bit of um, what got me into doing what I'm doing and where I'm at today. And then um, the plan is we're going to have truth on and on the next podcast and we're going to do some follow up shit. But check out his podcast it's dope. You got motorcycles, alien people, all types of shit there. But um, this is the first smoking word mashup with the Big Truth podcast. So once again, for my brother, yo, David, I love you. Let's set this shit off. If you got hairy balls or a hairy shaft, then you got to check out manscape.com. They make all kinds of uh, potions and elixirs and razors and whatnot. Uh, all these products that are backed by science research and development, all in the name of uh, male genital health. Uh, so they have a razor called the lawnmower 3.0, uh, that has these, uh, cutting edge, uh, ceramic blades that, uh, nick and like cut resistant. So you can shave with reckless abandon down there and not have to see any blood on your fingertips. You know what I mean? No one wants to see blood from that down that area on their fingertips. So check them out. Manscaped.com. They also have, um, uh, things like ball toner and, uh, uh, anti-chafing creams and like soaps and different things. Uh, uh, they even have like, uh, like, um, what's the man perfume called cologne. They have cologne and stuff. Uh, and, 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 you know, so you can check them out, manscaped.com. They have these like promo bundles as well, uh, that are discounted bundles where you can get a razor and a couple other products at a reduced price. And if you use the code promo, the promo code, uh, big truth at checkout, you will get 20% off your order. So go to manscaped.com, get whatever you want. Use the promo code big truth at checkout. You will get 20% off your order and free shipping. Also want to thank law tigers for coming aboard as a sponsor. If you're not familiar with law tigers, they are uh, lawyers that represent motorcycle riders in accidents and uh, they are riders and they're for riders. So uh, you want to check them out at LawTigers.com, at Instagram at law tigers uh, on Facebook at law tigers. And if you're in the Massachusetts area and most other areas, you can put law tigers in your state and uh, the, the local one will come up. So if you're here in Massachusetts, you go to Inst uh, Facebook uh, at law tigers, Massachusetts, and you can get in touch with a attorney uh, to represent you. If you've been in a motorcycle accident, uh, especially when it's not your fault and which seems to be happening more and more um, on the reg as people are, are distracted as they're driving with their cell phones or whatever the fuck they're doing. Um, I own a motorcycle shop. I got three bikes in here right now that were all uh, victims of motorcycle accidents where a distracted driver hit them. So shit really happens. So check out lawtigers.com and uh, get the representation that you need if unfortunately you've been in an accident. Hopefully you never used, this is a sponsor I say, I hopefully uh, you never need to use, but if you do need to use, this thing is available to you. Uh, check them out. Also, check out amirthamia.com. Uh, it's a clothing and lifestyle company that uh, two of my friends own. Um, excuse me. Um, I drank a bunch of Trulies. Uh, Mark from the unseen got me addicted to these fucking things. And uh, so it's his fault. Uh, but yeah, check out amirthamia. They... Uh, uh, have a clothing and lifestyle company. Uh, they make all kinds of merchandise, whether it's t-shirts, hats, hoodies, uh, socks, whatever you need, cool shit, uh, all backed by the fucking streets. Like it's not like a fly by night. Some dudes coming into milk of culture. These dudes live, breathe and, uh, and, uh, have been doing shit the right way for decades. So check them out. www.amertamia.com on Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff, simply at Amertamia, which is O M E R T A. M I a, uh, also check out pitchfork Uh, my boy Warren has a label, um, uh, well it's a clothing company brand and, uh, and, and label called pitchfork. Uh, he's been around for years, a staple in the metal punk and hardcore scenes. Um, 
not only do they do t-shirts and jackets and hoodies and all that shit, but they also do uh, limited edition uh, records. Uh, they're doing this seven inch uh, a series right now called Back to School, where they got an East Coast band on one side, a West Coast band on the other. They got all kinds of different uh, limited color vinyl ways. Uh, so check that out, pitchforkny.com and simply uh, at Instagram at PitchforkNY. Uh, you won't be disappointed in anything that they have to offer. Uh, check out ChopCult.com if you are into motorcycles and choppers and shit. Uh, they are the largest online resource and uh, information clearinghouse for this for these worlds. Uh, you can go on. They got an online message board. It's broken up by topic. Um, they also have online classifieds where you can buy, sell, swap, bot or whatever for for motorcycle parts and for whole motorcycles whatever um they have information on upcoming events they have uh newsletters um they got uh, social media stuff um you can get check them out on and well before i even get into where it is just so you know membership is 100 percent free so it doesn't cost you fucking nothing to get on there um and i guarantee you'll get in and you'll see some shit that you need to see whether it's you're looking for information for a specific bike or some tech advice uh you know or you want to just check out some co cool choppers that people have built or you're looking for a part uh, so check them out simply at chopcult.com and on all the major social media platforms at chopcult. Chop Ahead Custom Cycles is my shop, and uh, we are a full-service brick-and-mortar motorcycle shop. So you come in here, you bring your bike in. We can do everything from an oil change to build you a full custom chopper. We do speed work. We do uh, engine upgrades, you know, which is kind of in the same vein as fucking speed work. You know, I, I'm... I'm little drunk here and saying the same thing twice uh we do you know audio we do whatever the fuck you need um and we sell parts it's, it's a, you know we got a parts counter we got a showroom uh where we sell in the showroom we have uh parts we have uh motorcycle apparel we got gloves jackets fucking whatever you need i can if i don't have it here i can get it uh, helmets, whatever. We carry Biltwell, we carry uh, Simpson, we carry Bell, we carry Daytona, all that shit. Anything you want to need, we can get it. If we don't have it, we can get it. Give us a shout at chopahead.com. Uh, you can give us a call if you're local, 508 995 6764. I mean, pretty much people call us from all over the country all day anyway, so you can call us from wherever you are. And if you're local, come come by and see us. We're actually a store you can walk in and try a fucking helmet on and try some gloves on. It's not like buying shit on fucking online. Like, you can come in and try it on and see what actually fits and works for you. Uh, uh, 13 County Road, East Freetown, Massachusetts, www.chopahead.com, on Instagram at chopahead, and on Facebook. Facebook at chop ahead customs with a K um, last but not least, check out big truth podcast.com for all, for more information on the show. we got every episode up and please, if you haven't already done so, if you're listening to this and you like it, um, you know, subscribe on whatever platform you get your podcasts on, whether it's Spotify or Apple or iTunes, whatever, or, uh, Google, whatever, uh, subscribe. That's important. Also leave a rating. You, you know, if you don't want to write something out, you know, you can, they have the stars and stuff. You can leave a rating and even better if you leave a comment or, or, or you type out a little uh, feedback or rating, that's even better. But, um, if not, you know, you can also check out BigTruthPodcast.com. Every episode is there. There's more show information and information on how you can donate or become more of a part of the show. Um, if you have any show suggestions or anything like that, you can also email BigTruthPodcast at gmail.com. And now I want to get into today's podcast with my brother from another mother, Hoya Rock. You might know him from Madball or plenty of other bands or plenty of other endeavors. Uh, we're going to get into all this coming up right the fuck now. We have a 
Yes, yes. Once again, we have liftoff. I want to thank you for listening to another episode, or tuning in to another episode of the Big Truth Podcast. And uh, I am here with my homie Hoya Rock, who you might know from Mad Ball or Spoken or Smoking Word Podcast or Casa de Rock or bands like Demise, True Union, Hazen Street. There's a whole plethora of things you can know this cat from. And uh, and then just in full disclosure, we just had about 20 minute solid conversation, <laughs> and I had one of my the file on my SD card corrupted, so it's starting from scratch again but if i can uh if i can save the uh the uh, the original uh first 20 minute segment of the podcast i'm going to enter it back in so if it sounds a little weird or glitchy that's uh, that's just the full disclosure heads up of why oh yeah what's happening brother yo yo what up what up that little extra thing if it comes through that's for the patreon yeah that's yeah hell yeah, yeah 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 that's the lost <laughs> file see, exactly and you see corruption even fucking happened to the the, the fucking the memory card you see yeah. corruption's everywhere yeah yeah, dude, it's fucking crazy, right? But yeah, man, that's a fucking good idea. Now, nah, this is the podcast. I'm not even going to put that in. That's extra content uh, for, for, for Patreons. I'm going to get a Patreon right now just so I can get some subscribers who want to pick that, pick that up. Absolutely. Here, the last 20 minute uh, hidden 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 uh, podcast, secret podcast. Exactly. Right? Exclusive, exclusive. The, <laughs> exactly. The B side. The B side. <laughs> but yeah, no, ba- you know, a lot of fuckery going on. You know, like we were qu- talking about quickly, you know, well, what's going on? But um, not saying shit is bullshit, but there's a lot of bullshit going on. And um, we hope whoever lost and is affected by this shit, you know, we, we, you know, we got a lot of love for you and we know there's some shit going on. But also, you know, with people that believe, you know, keep your minds open and always be alert with what's going on. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Like, Absolutely. You know, but um, yeah, you know, Florida is like, like I was saying, Florida right now is a you know, it's an interesting place. Again, you know, um, it was one of the worst places at one point, and now they're opening. I just found out today they're opening up school again. So, you know, uh, you know, I like you know what I tell everybody about this shit. You know, make up the your your own mind and feel the territory yourself. Yep. You know, you know the 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 the, the way you, you know your neighborhood ticks by. You could see what's going on. You know what I mean? You could feel what's going on. Absolutely, and you know, well, well, and act accordingly. Well, I think that's one of the main things, though. People are so disconnected from their neighbors and their neighborhood or wherever, and and everyone's just staying home and they're watching the news. And and like we were talking about before, like the news is just the news is only reporting shit that can either scares you or riles you up or makes you pissed off or makes or makes you or or it's all fear and loathing and fucking and and, and anger, and that's all that's really going on. So if you if you watch that shit all the time, you you think this thing is like a fucking you know like you know like the bubonic plague or some shit. It, like you know and it, yep. and, and, it, and it really isn't and and but like we said that with the caveat we're not downplaying anyone who was personally affected by it it's just that the numbers of people that are personally like really affected by it meaning like mortality yeah. or like really uh heavy duty crippling sickness is, is those numbers are very few statistically um yeah but, but uh yeah man i wish i wish that other one was integrated because we had a really fucking smooth good talk about that hey but you know one thing yeah. you, you talked about because like uh hoya had mentioned that he doesn't have any uh tv he only has like netflix and stuff so yeah but only netflix and that shit Yep. So you've been able to kind of stay out of the the, the fucking crazy pandemonium of this. Um, I think yeah, that's yeah. Man, you, just shutting off, man, and just going out into the world and actually seeing the world and and, and being in the world, like whether it's your neighborhood or, or whatever. Just like it ain't absolutely. I did it not by design. There. Yeah, I did it not by design. I just in my yeah. room naturally. I don't have a uh, basic cable, or whatever. I had a I had a smart TV, and yeah. then this whole shit went down, and then and I was kind of glad because. Yeah, you know, yeah. I find out the only news I really look at is when I, w- I would check up on my area. And even then, you know, again, any news you get, you don't know where it comes from in a way. Yeah. So I just get a ballpark on, you know, I was curious at one point at its worst with my, how many cases my area had. Yeah, you know, yeah. in my area, everybody wears a mask. Everybody was doing whatever they, you know, was asked to them or whatever. And um, and in my area, from what I saw, I had 11 cases. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, there was, you know, so it was like, You know, my main thing is obviously, you know, not knowing what's going on. You know, I have an older, uh, my father's an older guy, you know, who had had a a triple bypass. My whole thing is for me, you know, I could believe whatever I want to believe. But if God forbid something happens and he gets sick and then, you know, I'd rather play it safe and have people alive 
and then let the un, the fuckery, you know, uh, you know, hopefully unveil itself yeah. sooner or later. Sure, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I, right. I, you, out of respect to your father, you're playing it safe, and and you got kids, yeah. and yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but 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 I do, like I said, you know, I, I see the the, I, the way my my neighborhood tick. You know, what I mean, you go out, you see what's going on. You know, you yeah. can feel how it is. You know, but, but people have fucking protests with a th- thousands of people standing right next to each other, and then they try to say that had nothing to do with that, with an outbreak. Yeah, yeah, that's bullshit. <laughs> that's so just stupid, fucking yeah. moron shit. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. You know what I mean? You, you know what I mean? It's like, obviously it is. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, it does. Like, I know for a fact from traveling, you know how many times I've been in Europe and uh, there's, a, you know, a flu or something, you know, sickness, right? I come home and then two weeks later, a flu comes to the East Coast. You know, some other type of shit like that. Yeah, it's yeah. just, you know, that's how it works. Yeah. You know, you could feel it out. You know what I mean? If you don't travel... You know, you just sit there and kind of just absorb what's going on. We, you know, I've been lucky where I travel the world, and yeah, you know, you know, again, you know, I ain't down playing nothing. You know, there's definitely some shit going on, but how we never caught some bubonic shit in our past. We've been in the craziest places, yeah, yeah. the most unsanitized places. Oh, yeah. not that nothing. We can't get nothing. I ain't saying that again, but it's crazy how you know, like I don't know. I don't know. There's just a lot of fuckery yeah. going on. Yeah. I want everybody out there who lost anybody, you know, mad prayers to you and your fam, but also keep your mind and your eyes open. Absolutely. That's it. That's, you know? Yeah. And, um, yeah. And just, it, 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 be it, smart. Yeah. Cause just not to, to, not to be to death. It's just the, you know, whether it's, uh, intentional, like malevolent fuckery or it's just like stupidity, the way yeah. this has been handled, even now with the reopening, like, like, okay, yeah. you gotta, um, you, you can go to restaurants again, but you gotta wear your mask when you walk to your table, but when you sit down, you can yeah. take it off. It's I like, know. okay, so COVID only hangs out at five feet in the air and hey, higher. I, I, I'll, get, I'll give you a better one. <laughs> yeah. My brother's a park ranger in South Beach. And at one point was you're on the beach you, you, when you go in the water. You could you could take your mask off when you get out to you stand on the sand. You got to put your mask on. <laughs> it's like yeah, you fucking is this fuckery exactly? But I could go to the restaurant and sit five feet from some other motherfucker, and that's okay. But exactly on the walk to the bathroom, wear your mask. It's yeah, kind of like yeah, just weird shit. They don't know what's going on. And, and I've harped on this a million times, but like small businesses had to close, but Walmart could stay open. Like Walmart got thousands yeah, yeah. of people a day walking through there. There's some of these small businesses that maybe have ten, and they got to oh, close. Yeah. Fucking bananas. But oh yeah, you know what the other thing I've been thinking Great. about lately, um, and and and. and how they sold it to us. Like, remember when this shit first started popping like March and they were showing us yep. all these videos of people in China who were just dropping dead on the street, like standing at like the subway yep. station or on the street and this yep. and that. Did that even happen once yep. in America? I don't like, yeah. where did that <laughs> shit go, dude? Like what the fuck? I mean, that's why everyone got all nervous and hyped up in the first place. We were seeing that shit. We're like, Oh, motherfuckers are just dropping on the street. I don't think that yep. happened here fucking once. You know what I mean? I never saw a video. And, of that. And, and you know, <laughs> And we have a lot of Chinese brothers and family, <laughs> but I, but you're gonna tell me China's not known for fake news? You gotta yeah, be yeah, fucking kidding yeah, me! Yeah, yeah. You know those motherfuckers. You know what I mean? There's a fake news on on our part. There's yeah. fake news everywhere. Yeah. You know, we're talking about the kings of mental warfare. Yeah. You know, not just the Chinese, America. You know, the world yeah. powers. These are this is why we're world powers because we're the, we're the the kings of fuckery. Yeah. Unfortunately, the people of these places they have to pay for it, you know. Yeah. And whichever way you think, you know, it's yeah. We're we're the pawns in that game, which sucks. So Absolutely. You know, and, yeah, and, you and, know. And China has a little bit of an interest in seeing our country crippled in some ways, you know what I mean? And if, if, if Absolutely. And then, I don't think there's ever gonna be I mean, you know, knock on wood and I'm you know, whatever, yeah. but I don't think there's gonna be any more major world war like ground wars like World War Two type shit. I don't think the World War Three is gonna be yeah. a ground war, but you know, it's more like all fucking psyop shit and fucking sabotage yeah. industrial and 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 and, uh, and, 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 and commercial and whatever it kinda espionage and and, and, and sabotage like that and and all fucking games dude like that like fucking mind absolutely fucks, dude, you know what i mean hurt the pocket before yeah. it was okay cripple their their money so yeah. we used to put our soldiers they put their soldiers now it's fuck that that type of warfare is not popular nowhere now yeah. how you do it you do this you stop sales you stop um, 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 international 
trading. You stop yeah. really go right towards yeah. the pocket. You go right for the you know economy. I mean? Yeah, right for the exactly. economy. Exactly. Go right to the shit. Forget that body. Start to leave it wallet to set. Yeah. Then yeah. you see really what's up. And that's what they're doing. They, you know, they up their game on the warfare. Everybody. Yeah. yeah. You know, which, you know, which is a crazy, it's a crazy fucking thought, man. But, um, yeah, that's the world we in is 2020, you know? <laughs> Absolutely, man. So fu- some fucking weird's going on. We don't really know what it is, but you can just sense that there's something off. And, and you know, it's it's just, you know, obviously we're not, you know, um, high level uh, political analyst with like insider information. We're just kind of postulating. But that's what you got to do, man. You got to keep an open mind and think about what the fuck could really be happening so you don't get caught yep. up in the hype and just follow the the story that they're feeding you that's just based on fear, uh, you know, of, of an illness that isn't what they sold us, you know, and, 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 and they're yeah. just trampling all over us in the meantime, which, you know, I get it. Like, uh, you got to make some personal sacrifices for the greater good of public safety, but at the same time, like, you know, you know, make sure you, your rights ain't getting taken away forever from, for some, from, for some shit. Like, yep. you know what I mean? It's fucking crazy. I, yep. Absolutely. Like, you know, right now, you know, I haven't worked in almost a year because I'm yeah. affected by this shit. Yeah. You know, so like I understand that shit's hurting me, and yeah. I want, and I'm ready to get back out there. Yeah. But you know, I, I also, you know, like I told you, I try to lay low as much as possible because I have an older father and a son, and just because I exactly I got my GED, that's it. I got to Onada High School. I I don't I don't claim to be a fucking doctor or one of sure. these people. So, but I'm also not an idiot. So I try to, you know, I'm ready to go to work and that should be my decision. But I'm also like, okay, go about shit the smart way or as smart as I think I could do so everybody could get back to regular life and be safe. You know, that there's a middle ground. People are not letting a middle ground happen. They're just making you go one side or the other. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Well, that's like everything right now. The country's so polarized. You're either Democrat or Republican or left or right or or pro-mask or anti-mask or this and that. And it's like, hey, man, real most motherfuckers really live somewhere in the middle and uh, you know yeah. you can't listen to just the extreme sides of both both sides. You, you know you know what I mean. You gotta you gotta kind of absolutely. Like you said, and you know things. it's a balance. Yeah. When you're all on one side, everything tilts to one side. If you're yeah. in the middle, you 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 got control of your of your surfboard. You know, yeah, of your yeah. skateboard. You got control when you're in the middle. Yeah. Man. You want to turn a little left, you put a little pressure on that, and it goes that way. You go like once you're all on one side, it's hard to get back to the middle. Yeah. Man. And that's in life. Yeah. With everything, you know what I mean. When you when you play that middle, you could go left or right, and it and and it won't seem crazy. When you're all far on one side, you're you're a nut. Yeah, you know oh, what I mean. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 and and you're you're gonna go in a circle. What happens yeah. if you go fully left, 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 left? You're in a circle. You go fully right, right, right. You're in a circle. Absolutely. You know what happens when you stay in the middle? You go forward. Yeah, absolutely, man. So and, and people got to take that in consideration, but you know. Yeah, man. Fuck yeah. Fucking, um, so I know you, you, like you said, you, you haven't been able, you know, Madball is a, uh, extremely active touring band. Like, and, and I know that's, you know, like one yeah. of your main sources of income and you haven't been able to, to do any of that. What, what are some of the things you've been doing in, in your downtime, man? Like, you know, since March or whatever. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, it's crazy, man. You know, uh, Madball is my main income, you know, it's been my main income for fucking 26 years. You know what I mean? Like, yeah that's what we make our money is like, you know, people, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm glad people see us as, you know, in our genre as, you know, a top tier band. And, you know, that's great. And it feels good and all that, but I don't see no royalty checks. There's no royalty checks in our world. There's no, like, you know, some big advance that me and Freddie been living off of, yeah. you know, we make our money for playing shows, you know, this business don't work that way. You know what I mean? For us, it doesn't, you know, not a hardcore band. Yeah. So, and, you know, not playing hurt us a lot, but, um, you know, like I do my, I've, I've been doing my merch, you know, the, the whole cost of the rock.com. I always be doing, you know, I've been doing merch for a minute, but during these times, it's what's been keeping me alive that, you know, little stuff like that. And just, you know, again, you know, not going out, you know, yeah. trying to just, I have to really play every dollar I, I spend, you know, gotta be for my son, gotta be for my house. And um, I'm glad that my brother is the one who's been working throughout this whole shit because it's been a lot of help to my family because, um, like I said, there's no money coming in unless it's for my merchandise. And I've just been using, 
I'm investing in the future with, you know, we're writing our 10th Madball album. We've been, you know, we were going to do that before this COVID shit. So it kind of made me buckle down and, you know, focus on my music, you know. So I've been hitting the music hard a lot. Yeah. And I also relaunched the Smoking Word podcast, my podcast, which originally I had it about four or five years ago. But the problem was back then was technology. You know, I'm a fucking gorilla. <laughs> and there was too many buttons to press. And yeah. at the time, recorders were a lot of buttons and settings. And without the help of somebody, you know, um, being with me constantly, I, you know, I couldn't put out content. Now during this whole um, um, COVID shit, you know, the whole Zoom wave hit. And I, I you know, I, I got drawn to it because I said, you know what? Now's my time to get creative. I want to relaunch the Smoking Word podcast. And now I have Zoom, yeah. which is made for gorillas. Yep. And, you know, and it's just, it's very 101 and very useful and, and something that could, you know, couldn't have came at a better time. And I've been hitting that hard, man, you know, keeping the brand alive, you know, um, being in touch with my, you know, with our world, you know, and keeping creative. So I've been working on that a lot, you know, and that also has spun me into other ideas of, you know, uh, other possible uh, business ventures within our world. Yeah. But mainly, you know, being creative and maybe that paying off in one way or another. You know, if it ain't money, it's investing in the band and our movement. And that comes back to me, you know, sure. one way or another. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Just, just trying to be busy, man. Keeping busy with, you know, the podcast, with the merchandise and writing music, man. And just, I've been working out a lot. I also use this time to invest in myself. I, dude, you know I, I, mean? I can like, tell. I've seen the, the recent pictures of you, man. You look like you dropped a lot of weight, bro. Yeah, you know, um, yeah, you know, I've been, I've been working hard at that shit. You know, basically, you know, my mom's rest in peace passed at the beginning of this COVID shit that had nothing to do with the COVID shit. But, um, and I'm a single father and, um, you know, obviously, you know, having a kid, I, you know, I've always thought of being, you know, being a single father, I always, you know, thought about, you know, being, you know, I'm there for my son and all that, but my mom's was like his mom. Yeah. And when she passed, shit got really real. And you, you know, you could go two ways when this shit happened, you know, people either blew up and neglected the health. I went the opposite way. I said, my son needs me. And, um, and I use it like a, like a jail bed. You know sure. what I mean? I started working out. I fixed the way I ate, you know, I'm still working on it, you know, like, but, um, I cleaned up the way I eat, you know, the way I was living and, um, again, investing in myself. It's, you know, I thank my son for it. I don't thank COVID. Yeah. You know, yeah. I thank my son for it. You know, like, um, COVID just made me kickstart the shit and, um, sure, yeah. So I've been, you know, just keeping busy, like, you know, riding bike, hitting the heavy bag, keeping active. And it, and it helped me keep my brain focused on, you know, the mission at hand, you know, making music, making podcasts and investing in, you know, in myself. Fuck yeah, man. You know, so, yeah, you know, I, you know, you, you know how that, that saying we got to turn um, uh, le lemons into whatever yeah. uh, lemon juice. Yeah, or whatever yeah. the fuck it's saying is, but um, yeah, uh, you got you know, life, gives you, life give you lemons, you make lemonade, yeah, exactly. And I'm yeah. that's what I'm trying to do, make lemonade and get. I'm trying to get my fresh and sexy on for my Chippendales um, <laughs> calendar shoot. After this, that's my other COVID money yeah. maker. Fuck so, you. ladies out there, get ready, yo, get your money, get your man's money ready. <laughs> the fucking my calendar issue is coming out. <laughs> yeah, man, you you gotta make the uh, hunks of hardcore uh, uh, 12, exactly. twelve month calendar. <laughs> exactly, you know what I mean. But um, but yeah, man, just been doing on doing that a lot. You know, I'm you know I'm feeling good. You know, um, I feel I'm definitely more focused than I've ever been. Yeah, for well, sure. I mean, in a lot of ways, you know, as much as it sucks. This has been a period, you know, like for me, it's been weird because I've worked every single day. I, the motorcycle shop, whatever, just fell yeah. into uh, essential services, so I didn't have to shut down. So, um, yeah. But a lot of people like yourself and a lot of other my friends like had no choice, you know, whether they're musicians or whatever, their job shut down. Yep. Um, yeah. So it gives you some time to really reset and refocus. And, and you know, and I know it's unfortunate the, the passing of your mom coinciding with this, like, you know what I mean? Yep. But, but, you know, 
you know, I, I'm, you know, really, man, like, it sounds like you've been making the most of it, you know, using it f to, to really buckle down and focus on, you know, like you can't tour, but you can start, you can finish the fucking record, you know, like, or exactly. Or, <laughs> That's how you got to look at things. You can look at it at, at, Oh man, I ain't going to work. I ain't going to work. Well, guess what? All right. Millions of people ain't working. Yeah. Not that, 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 you know, it kind of helped take, you know, help spread the pain knowing that other people are going through it. Not in a fucking selfish way, but like, yo, we're all in this together kind of shit. Yeah. You know, and there's also a lot of people that are working. And a lot of those people that are working help support the bands that aren't working by copping merch, tuning in a podcast, which that helps also. Sure. You know what I mean? So it's like, um, you know, it's like looking on the bright side kind of shit. And, you know, my mother passing there in this shit was the most devastating shit that, you know, more than this COVID shit. And it made me, it also opened my eyes on, yo, dude, use this time instead of soaking, yo, you know, you gotta, you gotta get into fucking war mo mode, yeah. and meaning war for myself, get focused, work on yourself, start working on your music. Not that I ever slacked on my music, but I did slack on my health or yeah. not that I didn't know, but it, you know, you know how that is. Oh, I put it another day. Oh, I'll be all right. I'm okay now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm working now. This made. It put life right in front of my face. I was getting anxiety. Look at it. I never had anxiety. I never had none of that shit. I used to diss my boys that would get anxiety and bust their balls. I, I hate anxiety because I carry a lot of weight of a, my, my life with me, which I just, you know, I don't, I don't call it PSD, whatever that shit, these people, you know, that's for the Vietnam dudes. Yeah. But we all carry, you know, um, issues with yeah, us. Yeah. Everyone, that, had trauma, everyone has trauma in their yeah. life. Exactly. Whatever it may be in whatever way it is, we all carry that. And guess what? It will come out one way or another. If it ain't through an anger issue, through an anxiety issue, through your health, through um, lack of motivation, through, you know, whatever. It happened to me all at once. Did COVID not being able to work? Yeah, probably that had some of it. The passing of my mom? Yeah, that had to do it. Do something with it. Uh, me being a single father, yeah, that had something to do with it. Me not having a a a, a, a fucking a, a backup plan, you know, with my life. Did that absolutely? Well, guess what? Me losing my some of my brothers, my best friends ever. I lost my wife many years ago to cancer. Did that come out? Yeah, that probably all has something to do with it. Not that my situation is any worse than other people's, but it all fell out. It all came out at once. And then you could do two things. You could roll over and die, or you could go the other way and try to fucking, and I let, I ain't going to let a situation kill me. You know, I'm going to let, you know, um, time kill me. You know what I mean? I'm going to let that, I'm going to let, you know, it ain't going to be because of my, my lack of, Yeah. I know what's up. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I think of your health, think of your, your, your situation or whatever. I started looking at, the my son and saying yo that's the greatest thing both my sons that's the greatest thing i ever did and that's gonna keep me alive yeah man and that and that made me go the route i've been going because of my son not nothing else I, i'm lucky guy i got to tour the world i did some amazing things i meet i got to meet amazing people you know i, I you know i'm proud of a lot of things i did but my son's kept keeping me alive and and that's because of them. If I didn't have them, I don't know which route this would have hit me. Yeah. You know, I could I could be one of these guys that just, you know, mentally, fought, you know, I mean, I was never a, a guy that my 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 that my brain got the best of me, but it got the best of me at one point during this shit. Not just because the COVID, because of everything. Yeah. And man. then I said, I literally looked at my sons and I'm like, you know, and I wrote it. I got a I got a, a, a what do you call it like a a, a board up where, you know, a marker board where you put up shit, you know, what, you know, kind of what you got to do, you know, I got a podcast to it today or whatever. And I got it. And I literally wrote, I will win. And every morning I would wake up and see that. And I said, that's for my sons. I'm not going to let the shit beat me. And it was just not COVID, but everything. Yeah, man. Cause everything got thrown in my face at once. And then I said, that's why you see the smoke and word came back. That's why my merch game came up. 
That's why I started with the band, you know, all the music. That's why I started riding bike every day. That's why I started hitting the heavy bag, you know, 45 minutes every day. That, you know, all that shit was from that. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad in that way that it made me wake up. You know what I mean? And it's like, um, I talk about it now because I knew I can't be the only one going through this shit. And people got to know that, yo, you ain't the only person going through some rough times, dude. You know, a lot of people are. You just got to get to my mother. Rest in peace. She told me this when my wife passed. My wife passed. I never talked about this to people, but my wife passed. She found out she had cancer when she was three months pregnant. And she died a year and a half when my son was a year and a half. She had a rare form of cancer. And the one thing my mom said, you know, I thought my life was over. You know, just everything. I'm like, what am I going to do? And my mom told me the greatest thing God gave us. And again, this uh, no offense to you, atheists and devil worshippers or whatever <laughs> out there. Believe in what you want. But whatever you believe in, you know, the greatest thing God gave us was tomorrow. And at the time, I was like, oh, I don't want to hear that shit. I don't want to hear that shit. And then I would have one day where I could have a laugh. And then the next day where maybe I could have two la laughs and say, you know what? I got to do this for my son, do that. And then I realized, I said, you know what? You're right. You know, focusing and not dwelling, you push things to the right room and you could keep going forward. You know what I mean? And that helped me. That's how I based my life around. Yo, we got one more. You know, I just days you wake up and you, you know, you just shot. But I said, nah, fuck that. The next day, I hope I feel a little better. And guess what? You will feel a little better. Now, when you feel that little bit better, now you got to make it, put it to use. Then you get into whatever you need to do. And that should put me back on track. I mean, thank God for right now, you know, that's what's been keeping me focused, man. Just, you know, I'm living for the people that pass, all my people that pass, and living for my, my sons. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's the way I'm rocking, man, you know, and, you know, I could thank the times for helping me realize that right now. So, fuck, yeah, man. And, you and, know, and that's important, man, is finding finding the motivation. And But but even more important, like you said, like there's going to be times where you get stuck in the old shit, like and you have yeah. to acknowledge it, but then you have to move past yeah. it. You got to know where to put it and then move past it so that you can keep going forward. And uh, yes, and because it's gonna come up. There's nothing we can do about that. Like you don't control when that shit just pops up into your head. You just gotta. You can only control what you do with it when it does. And exactly, and you know, I, and I'll say, and I talk about it more now to people during this whole shit because, you know, you know, I, 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 you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a guy's guy. I ain't flustered easy. I've been through some real shit. I've been shot at. I've been, you know, in situations where police wanted to kill me. I've been in situations that. I don't know how I, this never happened to me years ago where I broke down mentally, yeah. but it finally caught up to me being a father changed my life. And then this type of shit and then my career and then losing my mind, everything fell on me at once. And then it made me realize, yo, guess what? This shit could happen to anybody. And if, and I, w I needed to hear that from other people to help me know like, okay, yo, it ain't just me. Yeah. You could get through this shit, yeah. you know, on some like, you know, I ain't no fucking um, um, therapist or nothing like that, but I yeah. can tell you this. I'm a dude that I could take a lot and took a lot, but it happened to me, and you could you could work through shit. You know what I mean? Like, you know, look at a guy like like Blood Clot. That guy's been through being abused. During the, you know what? The guy picked himself up. He lost himself years ago and then picked himself up, and now look at him. You know what I mean? I look at a lot of dudes like that and say, yo, guess what, man, you know, you know, we're lucky to have the chance to do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, um, but, you know, we're lucky. Right now, my son is coming to see what's up, what's up. All right. I'm talking. All right. But, um, that's the, my, my, the reasons I live just walked in my room for a minute. But yeah, yeah. You know, um, you know, you could use, you could use, you could use to lose or you could use to win. Yeah. I chose to win. You know what I mean? And everybody has that choice. Everybody. Everybody, everybody. Yeah. Believe me when I say that. You know, I ain't I ain't Toby. Shout out to Toby <laughs> with the whole PMA thing. But but there's it's there's truth. You know, when yeah. when you got tomorrow, 
if we could open our eyes one more day, we have a chance to get through the next hump of shit, man. Yeah. And that's what everybody got to do. You know, we got to stay focused on tomorrow. Yeah, man. Not yeah. just the second tomorrow. Yeah. You know what I mean? Tomorrow's happening you whether know. you like it or not. And it's just, yes. you, you can choose what to do with it, you know, and and, 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 and where you're going to go with it, you know, that's, but that's it. Yeah. So, you know, and, you know, so just staying really focused, it made me like really zero in on shit that I needed to work on besides my, you know, you know, I, you know, working out and also like being creative, man. I've been the most creative I've been in a long time. You know what I mean? And, 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 and I'm psyched on it because, you know, it lit a fire under my ass. Yeah. And, and you, then now I know, like, now feeling good, I'm like, I feel like, yo, I'm sharp, man. I'm feeling sharp with ideas. I'm feeling, you know, I'm motivated. You well, know what I mean? Well, I'll tell you what, man, like, you know, I get I get pretty drained every day. But what I will say is that I get up every morning and, you know, at least five days a week I go to the gym. And I don't like it all the yeah. time and I don't want to do it all the time. But I'll tell you what, when I'm in the gym, like shit starts firing. Yeah. I start thinking about all kinds yep. of shit and I'm like, I'm writing shit down mm -hmm. and I'm fucking taking notes Fact. and this and that. And then, Fact. you know, 10 at night, I'm fucking useless. Like, I'm like, oh, whatever, dude, yep. I'm just hanging out. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know. Oh, yeah. I'm not doing brain <laughs> surgery on anybody. Yeah, That's yeah. That's for sure. Yeah, but, yeah. And I don't wake up every day wanting to fucking, you know, you know, ride my bike for an hour and then no. come do, you know, 10 rounds of heavy bike. I don't know, but. When I do it, I feel amazing that I did it when it's done. Yeah. I feel like I earned my food. I feel while I'm doing it, I'm thinking of shit, you know, while you're killing time working out. And guess what? Science, if the blood is circulating to your brain and your heart, it's going to let that, 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 and you work at your mechanic. Yeah. What happens when the oil's going through everything? The machine works better. Yeah, it's well, it's well. That's the thing about well oiled. You know, when something's well oiled, yep. it's moving smoother. You know, and and more efficiently yep. and more effectively. And, uh, and yeah, and that's, and that's what I've been doing. And even when like like my anxiety kicked in while I was taking care of my mom's this this whole shit, and yo working out, yo that helped do that. And while you're working out, I started thinking of my music, thinking let me do the podcast, let me do this. Let me, you know, doing yeah. all that shit. And I'm like, you know, it sharpened my sword. It sharpened my sword. You know what I mean? And, and, and again, you know, not on just some positive shit, but yeah, it's on some positive shit. Yeah. You know, um, you know, um, just cause they feed us shit don't mean we got to eat it. Just put it like that. Absolutely, man. And, uh, you know, but, but yeah, man, like I'm, I'm, you know, I'm so stoked that you have, you know, I, I, I know it's like hard you know, losing your mom and then the COVID and like the, it's like a, it was like you got like a combination punch right to the fucking dome. Oh yeah. But like, Crazy. so glad to hear that you've been able to like, you know, turn that shit around and, 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 and use the time to kind of reevaluate things and refocus and, 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 and kind of just fucking rev up, man. No, no pun intended. Right. Yeah. And, and fucking, uh, you know, and I think that's good. You know, I think people need to hear that, man. So I, I you know, I'm, I'm stoked that you shared that because uh, I'm sure there's plenty of people right now that are drawing, drawing off that, and uh, yeah, hopefully it helps them that's find their I, motivation. You know, exactly, and that's why I'm doing it, not to be some, you know, Jesus Christ guy, you know, spreading that word, but you know, I, you know, I never thought that some shit like that would happen to me, and it did, and I also, and again, you know, it didn't happen in one day. It didn't happen in two days. It didn't happen in a week. But I worked on it, and I found myself getting out of the hole. If you ain't trying, you ain't going to do nothing. You know, it's the trying that does it. It's the little by little. Not doing nothing don't work. Little by little helps you through the hump. And I realized, I said, yo, I saw people been, you know, I think of people that have been in worse situations because there's always people in worse situations. And you could either lay down and die. Or you could get up and fight. Yeah. And I say, you know what? One thing I know I am, and I ain't one of those fucking lay down and fucking put a bullet in my head type of dudes. I say, you're going to have to fucking kill me. And then you know what? I would look at my boys and I said, if I die, I want them to know that pops went out swinging. Absolutely. And I said, if, then that means I got to get up off my ass and try. And once you try, you do. It's just a fact. Yeah. It's just a fact. Yeah, man. You try, it becomes doing. And I talk, my, my, my man, Double O, rest in peace, my brother, he used to come, tell me this, don't talk about it, be about it. And I say that shit all the time. And it's a fact. 
And you could take that with anything, with your career, with your relationships, with your health. Just don't talk about it. Be about it. That's it. At your own pace, but do it. And, and you, you know, you're the, 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 the human body and the brain is an amazing thing. You know what I mean? It's a really amazing. You exercise it, that shit get diesel. You know, brain power gets strong. And when you got a strong brain, the rest follows. And that's what we all got. And everybody has a brain. That means we all could fucking get our brains diesel. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And no matter what color, where you're from, what size, how far off you are, whatever, you could do it if you just apply yourself. You know what I mean? And and it's staying focused. You know what I mean? Like, again, a lot of us should have been statistics. We should have been dead. We could have gone the wrong, the wrong road, and we chose not to. Or we got lucky also that we, we bobbed left when we should have went right and, and vice versa. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you know what we got to also look at? We're lucky ones because we lost a lot of good people that got lost and never had the chance to have that, that what do you call it, that, that, that little thought pop in their head of maybe let me change this up. Well, guess what? We got to do that shit for them. Yep. We got, they, got, they live through us, so we got to do that for them. Not be like, you know, we want them to be in wherever they're at in heaven, whether it be like, yo, don't do what I did. Yeah, I love what you're doing now. That's what I wish I would have done. And that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to do it for them. You know, I do that for them. And that's what a lot of people got to do, you know. And it's um, it's it's crazy. But um, I tell people, you know, stay focused with everything. You know, you know uh, now's the time. If you ain't doing shit now during COVID, yeah, yeah, you know, you you got a lot of problems because yeah, there's true. nothing else to do. Yeah, yeah. But to work on yourself, your 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 business, you know, brainstorming your relationship, you know, everything. Yeah, you and, know, and, and that's things like you got the choice, man. You can succumb to it and just get and just wallow, or you can fucking do something about it. And it's not just you know, and and, and you know, you got to find you got to find the drive to do it and the focus, but you also got to be disciplined in it, like because. You know, yeah. there's plenty of days I don't want to go to the gym, but once I get there, I feel Absolutely. a lot better. And I'm like, fuck, I'm glad I did that. You know? But, you know, but like first 20 minutes fucking sucks fucking balls. Like, you know what I mean? But then like, you know, then you, everything gets going and you're like, all right, I'm actually glad I did this. And then you feel yeah, better no, about it course. later, you know? Absolutely. Yo, it, you know, motivation is hard, yeah. you know, and like it, it, not, not, it's not easy at all. It took my mom's passing, a pandemic, being a single father thinking of all the laws. So it took a lot of shit for me to finally realize this. But yeah. I also, like I told you, what I did for myself was I put up a board and I put my son's name on it. I put my pop's name on it. I put my, my brother's name on it. And I look at it every day. And yeah. I say, that's who I live for. That gets me up. Not like, oh yeah, I'm ready to rock today. I'm like, I just put my pants on, my sneak. I start tying my sneakers. That means it's on. Yep. You know what I mean? That's it. Like it or not, I'm going to go through it. And then guess what? Once you get through it, you're happy. And Absolutely. I would look at that sign every day and I'd say, oh, you know, nothing's more important to me than my sons, my family. And I say, you know, for them, I walk, I walk over fire and people got to do that. Yo, you know, do stuff like that. Write it down, put it in front of your face, write it on your mirror. Yeah. You know, that shit. So we, we, we are creatures that also we got to, you know, visually, get stimulated by looking at something, you know, we got to, sometimes we need that to stimulate us. Put a picture up of your goal, write the shit down, you know, put up, you know, a note, a, a, a note something that you're going to see every day. If you, to, to remind you why you're doing it, what, what, you know, why not? I did that shit too. Let me tell you, you know, not that I created something new because people talked about that shit for years, but if it wasn't for that fucking, that, that board I have up, you know, I don't know if I would have continued this much. Yeah, yeah. That reminded me. I would look at it and say, word, fuck, I got to. I got to. Yeah, Boom. Yeah. You know, there's no excuses. You know what I mean? And I'm like, I got nowhere to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Might as well work on some music, <laughs> do some push-ups yeah. and fucking, you know? Yeah. Sit, write down ideas for the podcast. You know how that is, you know? Yeah. You can use time to create, you know? Yeah, man. It's crazy, but. So, so tell people about, uh, smoking word podcast. And I, I know you, you had started it a few years back and then kind of had a hiatus from it. Like, uh, yeah. give, let, let people who aren't familiar with it, give, give them the kind of the basic concept of the podcast and, and what you got going on now with it. 
Well, yeah, you know what? Basically, you know, I had it about four or five years ago, which I wish I never stopped. But um, again, um, you know, it was it started out from you know, I'm a black belt and shit talking. You know what I mean? <laughs> and um, and people when we would be backstage talk talking, you know, telling stories and whatever, and I would hear from a lot of people. They were like, man. I love being a fly on the wall kind of thing, you know? And I'm like, yeah. And, I, and then when I sit back, I'm like, yeah, we, we, we've experienced some real funny and cool shit in our lives. And then the podcast shit popped up, you know, that, that whole movement came through and I was like, yo, that helps keep the brand alive. And it's something cool to do. Yeah. And I say, yo, you know, let's do it. And I would do it from the road. But at that time it was still me with a little hand recorder, which I never learned how to use. And but I had my sound man who would help me do all the button pushing. And when we were on tour, we would always do um, 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 interviews on the road, and he do all the I do all the talking, the shit talking. He do all the button pressing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like he was and the then when engineering I went home, producer. Yeah. I, yes. And then when I went home, I realized, man, it's fucking. You know, I'm just not a tech guy, and it was hard. For, and he was German, and it was hard for me to do like. You know, hey, let me send you this podcast, edit it, send it back, and be on. You know, be consistent because the main thing is being consistent. You know what I oh, mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I kind of let it slip for years, and I've been wanting to do it. And people would always hit me up. Yo, you got to bring it back. You got to bring it back. And at the beginning of this COVID shit, I, you know, I've been saying I've been wanting to do it. And at the beginning of this COVID shit, I said, Yo, you know, um, we need to keep the brand alive. You know, meaning the band, the merch, and just being connected to our world. And I said, yo, now's the time to do it. And I've been seeing that Zoom shit, which was getting big because of meetings and all that. And I go, wow, they made it really easy. Mm. You know, you you know, you, you, you get the Zoom thing, you got a video, and it right automatically throws the audio in a file. I said, boom, this is mad easy now. Yeah. And then I said, yo, you know, again, I asserted myself. I said, you know, I got, you know, my boy who helps me out. Shout out to Gator Food. You know, I got, you know, with him, me and him, we're a good team. You know, I, I brainstorm a lot of shit, and, and, and he lives right by me, and we, we're able to make shit happen. You know, and he's on board with, you know, we think the same with a lot of shit. And, um, you know, again, it, you know, obviously we're hardcore guys, music guys, but the concept was interesting people, lifestyle people. You know what I mean? Just talking and having a good time and... You know, I don't do it. I don't do a podcast to talk about myself. You know, I'm glad, you know, people show me love and got love for what I do. You know, of course, that feels good. But I don't do a podcast to talk about myself. I do it to find out about other people because I'm interested in people. Because the, the, the most normal person you think is normal has some interesting shit to talk about. And that always intrigued me. You know what I mean? Just interesting talk. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I'm I'm always... You know, I have a lot of thoughts on a lot of things, and I always like hearing other people's, you know, their thoughts, even if it's to argue with them or not. I yeah. like doors being open instead of just shut. You know what I mean? And you know, it, it, it keeps. You know, I mean, I, again, I'm, I, I like I'm interested in good dialogue. You know what I mean? And um, that got me. And then you know, talking to, to home friends and whatever, you start finding out, man, a lot of interesting people we know. You know, and it's like, yo, this is cool shit and out of those talks people get you know you hear about you know sometimes they might get motivated or just be entertained and i'm like you know it's good to get something out of something yeah, you know man. what i mean i get I, I you know like you you know we get we 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 we, we get um um stimulated by good talks and sometimes that helps other people out well that's a double that's a double win oh, yeah, who man. doesn't want to win Absolutely. you know what i mean and, and, and um, the crazy thing too is like, and I think we we kind of touched on this, but you know, a lot of most, not everybody, there's only been like, like actually, kind of like one uh, person that I that I wasn't like personally friends with or, or knew well before I had come yeah. on the podcast. But yeah, everyone I know that I come on, you you learn so much more about people when you're in like this yeah. kind of because this isn't it's a. It, like we're just talking shit. This is like what would be if we were backstage at a Madball show. We'd be talking shit like yep. that. So, or you know, when we're out yep. Frisco at a meeting, or you know, whatever. Yep. Um, but 
it also isn't like this is you know like a more one-on-one just like outside of like the regular norm conversation so you can get you can explore shit more and and and, and talk about like more i don't know it just seems like no matter who i have yeah. on i'm learning shit from people i know for fucking years and i'm still learning shit about them you know because of the podcast and i think that's one of been yeah. one of the most interesting and, and, yep. and rewarding parts of it you know yeah absolutely like you said it's like we would have similar conversations but usually when we're all out together there's we have them in little spurts because you know there's 10 other people around 20 other people around yeah. and then when you go for those walks to get something to eat you know you start talking a little bit more specifics you know what i mean yeah and when and this platform kind of lets you be you know zero in on on, on certain shit you know what i mean like like, like you had Eric and, and, you know, and the same reason with me, like, you know, when, you know, Eric is a real, you know, laid back, you know, you know, when he talked to him he's really basic or whatever, but then when you talk to him, he has a man interested story. That's what oh, I yeah. loved about it. Where you find out how he got into fighting, you know, learning on video and then yeah. becoming a fucking world champ, you know. Four that time, like four time you, world champion. Yeah, man. I know. <laughs> I, I, I say he has two and a half time champion. Yeah. <laughs> but okay, we'll give him the four. But you know what I mean? Like, because he's not a guy who's out there like a big mouth like me. Or like, you know what I mean? He wouldn't talk about it only to the right people or people he's comfortable with. Or in the and right then when situation. He's in, you're yeah. like, yo. Yeah, it's like, you know, in that, in that, in that, in this kind of atmosphere, you know, you, you could either open up or be, or really close up. And they, you know, there they are people that won't open up to you. And then th that makes a lame combo. You know, the yeah, whole point yeah, is yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like, um, yeah, you I gotta like, get into it, man. You got to get into it, get into it. Yeah. I'm not like trying to figure people out. I'm trying to get to know people. Absolutely. You know, I'm not yeah. trying to figure out anybody's problems or what that. I'm just like, Oh shit. You know, you, yeah. you might find shit relatable or you might just be, you know, bugged out by their story. Yeah. And that's still, all entertaining and also like you know and it works in this podcast for forum you know what i mean like yeah because it's, it's, a, it's a real cool forum you know yeah because it's long term long form or whatever there's no there's yeah. no restrictions no time limits we don't have to stop for a break for a commercial or any of that shit and interrupt yeah. anything it just fucking goes yeah. man you know the, you know one of the other things that i found re really re rewarding about this and and not to you know keep bringing up eric but you, you'd brought him up um getting hit up by him afterwards saying, Hey man, thank you so much. Like this made me like reevaluate everything, just talking shit out on the podcast yeah. and it got me all focused again. And then he said the same thing after yeah. you went on yours, he was like, dude, between coming on, you know, my, my podcast and your podcast, like he's gotten so yep. refocused and recharged and re-motivated and he's getting back out there and he's starting to do seminars again. He's going for like more training to become like more professional, like yeah, security absolutely. And, this and that. And I'm like, fuck yeah, yep. dude, I'm glad, I'm glad you coming on, you know, helped you know what i mean like you, you know, know it's like therapy for some people you know yeah. even if it might be therapy they might not need know they need it or yeah. it might just be therapy to help get something out even if it's not uh, you know negative just yeah. something you know uh, you know subject that people won't talk about unless it was brought up because he's the type of dude who won't bring shit up no. unless you brought it up you know because he's uh, kind of to himself and i was like that with a lot of things you know what i mean like you know, like, if you don't ask me about it, you know, I might not talk about it. I started talking now about certain things because this whole situation, like, you know, like with, you know, bugging out and having fucking a little bit of anxiety and, you know, shit like my wife passing away and all that type of shit. When I realized, I said, yo, this is, I'm not the only one. Yeah. And I'm going to go. And that's a real horrible feeling, feeling like there's no other choice when there is. And then sometimes hearing, other people help you, you know, it gives you that hand to get out of that hole. And why not? Yeah, even if you don't, if that's not your, 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 your goal, you're doing that. You're throwing a little safety line and people could choose to climb out of the hole or they could choose not to, but you throw it out there. Why not? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's your story. You know what I mean? And I realized, yo, man, if it wasn't not in a fucked up way for other people's misery, I wouldn't think I could get out of my misery. Yeah, no, no. You, 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 the the fact is, is that you know, it, and it's not like you're not dwelling on the misery part. You're just seeing that you know other people have overcome shit. So 
why yeah. can't you? You know, of course you can. You know what I mean? It's just yep. more about the mindset, right? And it's like, hell yeah, you're gonna you're gonna and be talking, defeated. You're talking. gonna defeat it, or you're gonna let it defeat you. And you just have to. You it, sometimes it just comes down. To, it's a simple choice. Like it, it might not yeah, seem exactly. it because it gets convoluted around with a lot yes. of bullshit around it. But at the end of the day, are you gonna defeat something? Or are you gonna let it defeat you? And then you, ha yeah. you, you and then only exactly. you are responsible and accountable to that decision. But you have to make up your mind and fucking stick to it. And I know people that have, that go to therapists and all that. And you know what they do? They talk. Yeah. That's what they do. Yeah. Well, guess what? We're doing that without, you know, no medical yeah, no, yeah, no yeah, training yeah, yeah. or whatever. But yeah. we're giving people a platform, not just on some therapy shit. It could be therapy uh, for, you know, entertainment therapy, just yeah. forgetting about regular life. And you listen to pop. It's therapeutic. Yeah. And whichever way you want to, you want to talk about it, you know, talking where, you know, we're creatures of uh, that that like to be around other people and talk and you know and share. And what better way than talking? Yeah, you know what I mean. Absolutely. That's where you get down. Where you learn shit about people. You learn, you know, the talk. I, I, and I was like that before podcast. You know, yeah. I, 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 you know, with a lot of my, our boys. You know, when you got a, you know, two hundred, three hundred people. You know, you think you know, you you, you ain't gonna know much about people. But when you you, you spend five minutes with each of them and quality five minutes, you start finding out more shit than just the beer they like, or what's their favorite band. Yeah. yeah you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And then that's when you start finding out and Oh, that guy's, Oh yeah. Yeah. Guess what? Oh yeah. His father's a doctor. Oh, get out of here. Word. Oh shit. Yo, I got this. Yo, yeah. Guess what? Oh yeah. Guess what? Yeah, he does motorcycles. Oh shit. Where my father ride motorcycle? Get out of here. Pop rides motorcycle. Right away. You're already, you know, you, 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 you get things get deeper and the convos get, you know, knowledge is, is shared. Yeah, yeah. And um, it's nothing better than that, you know what I mean, to yeah. to build. You know, we're in life to, to, to be built. You know, we, we keep building knowledge to the day we die. That's why all the people are the smartest people. Because yeah. they're constantly going through shit, picking shit through life, learning shit, learning, 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 learning. Learning. We and, never and, it, and it's on some wisdom shit. It's, it's not just book yeah. smarts or how much shit you got memorized. It's like real world application fucking wisdom. Like that's what old yeah. people got because they lived through shit and they got through shit. Like, and the fact that they're yep. still there means that they overcame a lot of shit. You know what I mean? And so, and they'll, they'll yeah, and yeah, more than absolutely. willing to tell you how to do it most of the time too, or how they did it at least, you know? And, 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 and yeah, I mean, you, and that's why most cultures around the world have like such like a, a, a respect and like veneration for 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 elders like like here we're, yep. we're kind of shitty with them we're like oh fucking this dude's in the way or this and that but like absolutely that motherfucker lived through a lot of shit you know, you could learn a thing or two just sitting down and talking to that dude or that lady for like 10 minutes you know like uh, absolutely you, that's some american shit yeah some american shit your kids 18 throw them out of the house um your old person throw them in the old folks home i don't you know you, I, I, you go to old Poland, you go to old South America, shit don't work that way. Yeah. Because they're family-oriented people. The, uh, most, I love America more than anything. Yeah, but, yeah, of course. But when it comes to the, the whole family morals or whatever, it has a lot of catching up to do. Because yeah. it doesn't matter if you were South American, if you're from Russia, if you're from Japan, your families, everything, you respect the elders. You don't fucking shit on them. You don't just throw them out to the side. You don't throw your kids out. You know, you keep that together. You know, you learn, you listen, you respect. And America, you know, which I love, does that get rid of your kid at 18 and throw your folks in an old folks home. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. You know it's what crazy, I mean? Yeah. And, and and that's the shit that I don't back. You know what I mean? Like, um, no way. That's no way that would happen, you know, in my book. And, it, you know, it ain't no Latin thing. It's an old world thing. Yeah, yeah. And guess what? You know, the, you know, there, there, there's still a lot of quality knowledge to be learned from old, old style mentality. There's a lot of bullshit thinking from old style mentality, but there's also a lot of gems in it. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And that's the thing. And I've been lucky, you know, since I'm a kid. I've been touring since I'm 19 years old, you know? And I'm and I'm 31. Not well, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, uh, but, but I've been I've been touring really? I'm the 30, world. I'm 32. 20... <laughs> yeah, I've, I've been touring the world for 26 years. I grew up with gangsters, and I grew up with kids in the street. I also got to meet doctors, lawyers, politicians. That I got a lot of love for police officers, 
guys that I got love for, they love me. And I got to see a lot of walks of life and a lot of different ways of thinking. And I also saw, guess what? There's a lot of things that all those walks of life agree on. Oh, yeah. And it's just, and, and, and we're lucky to be able to skate that middle and learn from everybody and yeah. learn what to look for, what we don't want. Yeah. You also learn how to have a thicker skin with certain people. You're like, oh, that's just the way they think. But not everybody thinks like that. Yeah, he also yeah. means well with this. He, you know, you could pick and choose your fights yep. a little more than, and you get to ride the middle a little bit more. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think when you ride the middle, you could make your own decisions easier. Yeah. You know what I mean? When, 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 you, when you're balanced. Yeah, man. Put it like that. For sure. And I mean, and I think too, like you being able to travel the world has definitely given you a more balanced perspective because you're seeing things from all walks of life. Like, and, and it's the same here. Like I, I've traveled too, like not, not as extensively as, as you, but, um, but, but you know, and you, you, everyone should travel a little bit, like, you know, get out of your yeah. comfort zone, go places. Because when you get, when you travel, you realize, you just realize so much more because you, you're seeing totally different cultures and, totally different ways Absolutely. of doing things and it's and it's insane man like you know like you know what it is you see people in it, absolute it, destitute yeah. destitution destitute like fucking poverty like that doesn't yeah. even exist in america like poverty that like we don't even see and there'll, oh, yeah. there'll be some of the happiest motherfuckers you've ever come let, across let, in your fucking let, life let me tell you so when we did the hundred percent video we did a video called hundred percent for everybody to go check it out. We did it in the favelas in Brazil, in Sao Paulo, Brazil, the shanty town. Yeah. A lot of our friends from a, a, a bunch of hardcore bands, shout out to questions from Sao Paulo. They grew up in those favelas. And the favelas, are uh, those are the ghettos. That's the shanty towns you see in the movies. They grew up there. And when we did, we did a video called 100% about proud of our heritage. Freddie, me, and all of us, we were like, yeah, we're not going to give some some video about us on the beach with palm trees. We want to show a real people, yeah. you know, where, how real people live. And we first started with on the outskirts of this favela, just to get some cool shots or graffiti shots on the wall and blah, blah, blah. And we, so while we were doing these shots, you know, two little kids come along, you know, kids with no shoes, just kids, you know, you know, poor kids coming, watching watching we move to the next site we say hey, come follow us the two kids turn into four kids the four kids turn into 10 kids and we kept going and going and if you see in the video we have hundreds of kids at the end we got we also got permission to go into that hood because you need permission you to go in permission. there but they That's, also know yeah yeah no they knew that we weren't going there to take our you know like like some rappers do they go in a hub of fucking gold chains and kind of flaunting the shit and that's kind of disrespect to the people living there yeah. they knew we were going there with the right heart and people that were with us grew up there and the, and the song was about being proud of being latin american and i swear to god first of all that's probably as a band for me personally the greatest thing we ever did as a band because i never i seen kids with no shoes that had the biggest smiles on their face you know what I mean? Yeah. Kids, they live in fucking shacks. No water, no light. These people were smiling. When we were walking, little girls were holding our hands, every single one in the band, grabbing your hands. You know why? Because nobody would even pay attention to these people. And I go, and people that were, some people that were around us were like kind of nervous because that's the hood for them. And I'm like, yo, how could I be nervous? These people look like me. You know what I mean? Like, they look like fam. And when you watch the video, I'm hoping we could get, I got a good friend, Pablo, who was there. He has a lot of footage from there that one day we could release the making of and all that footage. Because um, it's funny, like you said that, it, it, it reminded me a lot. So basically, we end up going through this, walking the, the whole street of this favela, and it was like, I mean, dozens and a hundred kids and people all following us. They're not hardcore kids. They were just, we get in the video. They felt special. They were all smiling and just happy that people weren't looking at them and just shitting on them. These people live in shacks. Yeah, yeah. And I remember, you know, Freddie even like, you know, we're you know we're about to leave and we were like, yo, we gotta, 
you know, what, we, what can we do? We get, we got all the money out of our pockets. And we went to the local store that's in that fucking hood. And all right, give us all the candy we could get, all the soccer balls we could get. And just, you know, started throwing it out, get, you know, hooking up all the kids. The kids went nuts, right? They're doing that. And I never forget this. We go, you know, we, we all saying bye. The kid, yo, one kid gives me his ID card from, a, you know, a, a soccer from a soccer team. Yo, the kids were playing with soccer balls with holes in them. They had no air in it. And the kid gives me, he grabs me and gives me his ID card. And he goes, this is so you don't forget me. Wow. And I was like, yo, the kid was like fucking nine years old. You yeah. know what I mean? And I was like, you know, literally everybody in the band, Riggs, Mitch, um, Freddie, we had boys and girls holding our hands, walking the street. Like they were just so happy. And I never forget this. We're throwing our balls. The kids are cheering. We get in our minivan. We're going to go back to our whole, our fucking four or five star hotel and eat, you know, um, 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 a Brazilian barbecue, all you can eat. And I never forget this. We're riding out. We just got in the car. We closed the door. We're all like, yo, you know, we were just adrenaline. We're like, yo, this is amazing. And I'm sitting there and I start thinking, I'm like, yo, we're going to go to our hotel and we're going to go eat. And, these kids are still there. Yeah. And I started tearing up and I had shades on. And I remember I was in a car with the whole band, my boy, Doug, shout out to Dougie in LA. And I kind of like go to the side to kind of like, I didn't want niggas see me tearing up. And I'm kind of like turning to the side. And then I hear from behind me and I see Dougie tearing up. And then I see Rick tearing up. And I see everybody, you know, we all started breaking down and I was like, yo, you know, we're very lucky for what we have. And it was beautiful to see people that really appreciate life. Yeah. They didn't have shit. And then we realized, you know, I, you know, after that, you know, we, we, you know, those, those, those people are with a part of the mad ball heartbeat forever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that changed our way on just on everything on thinking, you know, we, you know, we, we love kids and we love people, but that shit was like, literally that we saw, man, these people with smiles, smiles. Yeah. They didn't have shoes. Some of them. Yeah. And we're like, man, you know, we complain when we got a fucking, you know, the, the, the subways late. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, that's what we, I mean. Oh, we got to walk up three flights of stairs up to our apartment. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Or like, you know, like yeah, the, the yeah. TV broke or something, you know, it's like, yeah, right, yeah. You survived. You know, and again, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Traveling and traveling help us see that, you know, how different people live in different places, different. And like, and again, like with the whole traveling thing, the one pro and con of America is this. The pro is obviously we have a great country, different states, different feel, but overall education isn't good. In Europe, the, with, what's in the, the the space of America, you got fucking thirty countries, and kids grow up over there saying, "Yo, let me go to German kids, let me go to Belgium for a show, let me go to Holland for a show." And guess what? You learn to speak a language, you learn to learn yeah, yeah. a different language, you know, a cultures. You know, uh, students in Europe they get a student pass. You could go travel on the on the trains cheaper to other countries. Yo, that's why all those kids are smart. They know a little bit about history, about they all know more than one language. They all know that Amsterdam is not a country, it's a city, <laughs> like every dumb American, including myself back then. <laughs> yeah, I go like, yeah, I go to that country, Amsterdam. Because yeah, yeah. we, we fucking don't know better. For us, it's New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, it's still America. You know what I mean? Even though it's different, Texas has its own culture, it's still America. It's the beauty of it, but also where we lose out as far as you know, the, the, the mix of culture and the mix of languages, you know, and all that other shit that comes with being next to a lot of bordering, a lot of countries. And, yeah. you know, it's just a, another way of looking at life that, you know, it's good to have in your arsenal. You know what I mean? With survival, just going through life kind of shit. Oh, hell yeah, man. Hell yeah, man. And yeah. And that's, you know, and then circling back around, that's why I, I try and tell everyone, you know, 
should get out and travel a little bit if you can, man, because it'll give you different perspectives and you'll meet people. You'll have good times. You'll have bad times. And a lot of times those bad times become good times when you get home <laughs> and you can, yep. you can appreciate it or you can at least have a exactly. laugh, have a laugh about it. You know what I mean? And be like, but you know, while it's happening, it sucks. But afterwards, it's always a you know, it's a funny story or yeah, or yeah, experience. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'll give you a funny one. I remember me and Freddie, our first time in Japan, which we love Japan, and I always had a whole Japanese fantasy with the samurais, and I love everything Japanese, yeah, yeah. and we all love it. And the shows were great, the people are great. But I remember there. Now this is back in the day, and they're like, "All right, we're gonna go for sushi." We're like, "Oh shit, yo." Me and Freddie are like, all right, yo, we eat this raw fish together at the same time. Yo, you go first and I go. And then it's like, you know, it's this big deal, you know, in our heads is this wild shit. And then fast forward fucking five years, we're ordering sushi bowls. We eat that shit here. We love it. We're, yeah. fat, you know, because we weren't used to it. It wasn't part of our upbringing. Sure. And we go and then you learn, and you're like, you kidding me, man? We, we, we lucky we got to appreciate we got put on to some of this shit by getting thrown in the fire. You know what I mean? By, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, eating schnitzel in Germany, eating mayonnaise on fries in, in Holland and Belgium, eating raw fish in Japan. You know what I mean? Doing all that type of shit was, you know, learning. And now you, now there's restaurants that charge yeah. you fucking hundreds of dollars to eat that shit. Yeah. That years ago, we would have took it as, well, dead. I'm not eating that. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Or it's hundreds, of, hundreds of dollars here, but it's kind of street food over there. You know what I mean? It's it's the, exactly it's the, it's the par for the course shit over there. But <laughs> look at you know and I know. Twenty years ago, ask somebody, let's go eat Vietnamese. They would have looked at you like you were crazy. Yeah, they would have yeah. told you all this crazy. I ain't eating that shit. Who knows what's in it? And now what? Everybody has a bombing shop. Everybody's eating a fa fo fa yeah, whatever yeah, you want to call it. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, and it's amazing. Yeah. But you know what it is? We have these stereotypes, and since we don't know. Unless, you know, we're around those people to learn it or around it, you know, that's why I'm glad the world is yeah, yeah. definitely smaller than it was now. Thank God yeah. for the Internet, traveling and um, immigration, you know, you know, like, you know, I, you know, having a lot of different people. It's cool. Oh, you know, yeah, people, yeah, yeah. you know, for the right reasons to, to, to build some a place up. You know, you get to learn different cultures, and that's like the best shit. You know, to to be able to learn different ways of thinking, you know, different ways of living. It just makes your your your, your brain arsenal bigger. You know. Yeah, yeah. You know, and everybody should want that. You know what I mean? Yeah, man, absolutely, man. And and uh, you know, it's the same thing. Travel around. You always want to get into the local shit, but you always got that one motherfucking friend, whether it's a road crew guy or a dude that's rolling with you or whatever, that just wants to go eat cheeseburgers every day. Exactly. <laughs> and just going to McDonald's and all like the. And I'm like, dude. Yeah. Like we're here. Like just get some local <laughs> shit. And they're like, no, nah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to Wendy's or whatever. Because unfortunately, yeah. with the, that's the bad part of the world getting smaller is that you can be in the fucking middle of nowhere and there's a fucking McDonald's or some bullshit. Yeah, you know yeah, what exactly. I mean? <laughs> and, 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 you know, and I was guilty of that shit early on too. Me and Freddie, you know, everything was just so new. Yeah. We were like, yo, we don't, we're not familiar with that. There's no rice, rice and chicken. Like we know home, but we're not home. Yeah, and then yeah. we learn now we go anywhere in the world and you know, we find out there's fucking amazing food. If it's in Japan, if it's in Vietnam, if it's in Thai, if it's German, if it's Dutch, if it's, you know, in Canada, if it's Mexican, like you fucking yeah. kidding me, man? I'm I've been missing out my whole life. I'm glad you know. I'm glad that we, you know we that we we weren't ignorant. We didn't stay ignorant at least. We were yeah. for a little while. Yeah, but yeah. you know, yeah, especially when you're but younger. It's cool you, growing you know, up, also. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But I remember when we we went. Uh, we built a bike uh, for a guy in Japan, and he was he was he worked for one of the big magazines out there, and um, got the bike, put the bike in one of the big shows out there, the Moon Eye Show, which it's like the the biggest show you can have a bike in in, in Japan, and um, and they brought us out for that year. This was two thousand five, and the I will say though. The only thing I couldn't get used to, because, like, they put us up, like, they didn't even put us in a hotel. They put us in a, an apartment. 
and um, yeah, we had an apartment for a couple of weeks. And, uh, and and shout out to my bro, uh, my boy Moto. Like they 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 showed us a lot of love out there, and it was a good time. And J- J- Japan is a fucking awesome time. But you kind of got to have someone local out there that you yeah. know to bring you around because that makes the uh, difference. Yeah. That's like the difference in like going out there and having like an all right tourist time, and going out there and having a good time and seeing like the real shit. Like because they'll bring you into sure. bars that like only fit like fifteen people because everything's so small. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's like you'd never walk into that, you know. We were we weren't even staying in a touristy area, and you know, and um, and he he lived in that uh, that building too with his family, and he'd like, oh, come down and have breakfast with us, or whatever. And you go down there, and they'd be eating like weird fishy fishy like yeah, soups yeah, at yeah. like seven in the morning. I'm like, I I ain't yep. ready for this shit. I can't do this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like I'll do it later, yeah. but I can't do it first yeah. thing in the morning. That was the only thing that 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 was yeah, like, no, that fucked sure, me man. up. <laughs> Definitely the language thing, and of course, yeah, there's, there's some shit that we just, you know, you we don't like that shit in my own city. I don't like, you yeah, know, that yeah, shit, yeah, you yeah. know, in my supermarket, I don't like. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? When you have somebody there, kind of telling you what things are, you know, you just got to be a little bit more open than you naturally are, and yeah. then you'll see that little bit becomes bigger than you expected. It doesn't have to be everything, but you you you'll realize it in like. We're lucky now. Like, you know, we go anywhere in the world and we find something to eat happily. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And, and then you probably you know, know we'll someone be... so someone close yeah. out there and whatever. And, and uh, yeah. And yeah. then you find that you get home and you're, like, looking forward to the next time you're on the road and you can get some of that shit. Like, Absolutely. Like, I can't wait. Absolutely. To, I can't wait to get to Germany again and drink beer in a beer hall and eat a pretzel. Like, uh, you know yeah. what I mean? Or I can't oh, wait. Yeah. can't wait to get to Mexico City and just get street tacos, like, that are literally exactly. on the fucking street made by some old lady who's, like, making the exactly. tortillas by hand. Not, not, not like, fucking uh, whatever fucking chain is Absolutely. You go get here. you go get empanadas. Yeah. You go get fucking um steaks in Brazil. You get sushi in Japan. Yeah. You get schnitzel in Germany. You get poutine in Canada. Yeah. You know you get fucking uh, you know exactly. You know it's like it's fucking amazing shit. You know shit that over here in our own city we're gonna pay fucking a hundred dollars to get that at a specialty shop when it's yeah. like the norm everywhere else and we get the authentic shit. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, and it's like and again. You know, you got your arsenal. Your mental arsenal is just broader. Your your, your third eye is wider. Yep. By knowing that type of shit, you know what I mean. Learning, you know, um, um, um a little bit of the language, a little bit how they think. You know, yeah. not like you know, back in the day, we used to get in beef in Germany a lot because a language barrier. Yeah. But yeah. we realized, like, we had, I had one kid never forget. He came up to me after the show. This was also twenty six years ago. Um, uh, oh yeah. Spanish, I don't care. Fuck it, I don't care. <laughs> and I'm like, what? You don't care I'm Spanish? And I was like, he goes, yeah, fuck it, fuck. And I'm like, no, fuck you. <laughs> and, and I'm like thinking that when no, what he was trying to be like, I don't care that you're you're Spanish. We're all together. Yeah, yeah. He was yeah, a yeah, drunk, yeah. drunk moron. Yeah. And also, and, just and how they talk and play. Talk. I was and just gonna learn. say, anything sounds harsh, and they could be telling you the nicest compliment in the world, and it sounds fucking harsh. Exactly, <laughs> it's a harsh language. And, yeah. and, and I have, and I'm the best translator for that because I basically grew up in Germany, in Europe. The last 26 years of my life. Yeah, now yeah. I can hear that type of shit. And I know exactly. Oh, no, he don't mean that. He means this, this, and that. He yeah. said this, this. I'm almost like a translator. <laughs> Not that I know German, but I just no. know enough to know yeah, you, where they're coming from. You're a cultural you know translator. I mean? Cultural translator. Exactly, for sure. <laughs> my, 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 my third eye was that. Like back in the day, people that would have got beat down. Now I'm like, no, that guy loves us. He just, yeah, yeah. you know, he's and the, drunk and, 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 the sad and thing he is, only knows these four words. Yeah. And the sad thing is the dude would have got beat down as a fan who was trying to give a compliment. <laughs> and, and that's happened, man. Me and Freddie personally had chased guys while, while, they're, while they're cars driving away and we're throwing shit at it. They have map off stickers on it. Because, you, like, uh, you know, them uh, saying shit. some weird shit, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it crazy, is. yeah, you know. So what's up with the uh, with the new record? Uh, what what uh, where are you guys at with that? I know it's hard yeah, to get like, everyone in the same room right now, or to, to actually get to a studio and stuff. But like, is yeah, that- we're, we're, yeah. Basically, we were ready to start, you know, and we're waiting as shit hopefully could open up a little bit more to start getting in the studio to start start putting songs together. You know, um, we're on our working on our tenth album, which is crazy to think of. Yeah, but um, that's a milestone. Yeah, that's like, a milestone for a hardcore yeah. band, man. There's not a lot of bands that that have five records, never mind ten. Yeah, no, for sure. I'm like, you know, I'm psyched that um, 
I'm like, I never thought we would be the, around this long and, you know, and 10 a good number. And I, and we basically were, um, ready to start putting stuff together before this COVID shit anyway. And, you know, so I already had started writing music. I got a lot of music in the bank and we were waiting to start get to, to get together with the band. We were still working on it. The, the minute things open up a little bit to get the guys down to Florida to start getting some rehearsals in and, um, you know, we were thinking originally at the end of the year, but I kind of see it more in the early next year, probably getting in the studio. Yeah. Because um, we want to go back to California with Tim. Yeah. You know, shout out to Tim fucking Time Bomb fucking the studio where we did our last album. You know, we want to go back there and record. And um, so, you know, the, the plan is to drop an album for 2021. Yep. You know, so we're really psyched on that shit, you know. And if anything, we have a lot of shit to be said you know, during these times, I sure. probably, you know, translate good into fucking noise. Not even, you know what I mean, it, so yeah. And even just beyond the COVID man, like just 2020 has been yeah. a fucking year. I'm like, if there ain't some good hardcore coming out and punk rock coming out and, tw- and metal coming yeah. out in 2021, then something's really fucking wrong. Kids are really exactly. disconnected because I feel like there should be a whole revival, especially like shit getting more yes. like back in touch with like some of the political shit and whatnot. Like yes. there's a lot of fucking craziness exactly. going on that people should be reacting to for sure. I exactly, you know what it is? Two things will either happen. It will get a little bit of revival. Or it'll be pussified because people are scared to talk nowadays. It's true. Because they're scared. They say the wrong thing. Oh, it's going to label them right. It's going to label them left. And that's kind of whack, too, when the whole point is put everything out on the table so you could see what all the ways of thinking are. Yeah. And again, I go back to going in the middle. You start in the middle, and then you can work your way yeah. around what's what. But you know, if you, if you shit on people for giving their opinions, you're not going to hear them. Then they become sneaks. And yeah. then the enemy becomes quiet and, and stealth and you don't want that and yep. even sometimes the enemy ain't the enemy yeah you know what i mean sometimes who you may think is the enemy is not yep you know what i mean it's a, the person keeping you from learning is the enemy that's yep. who the fucking enemy is absolutely not letting you fucking learn anything new that's the fucking enemy no i want to hear what that motherfucker gotta say absolutely. no no fuck what he says because he blah, blah, blah. no i want to hear when the men they stop you they they they're keeping you from growth well, and that's and if they ain't and you grow, they're killing you. Absolutely, dude. And you just hit on one of the most important things that's going on in the fucking country nowadays is that, you know, whether it's coming from the left or the right, when someone tries to silence somebody else and you're not putting yep. things up to debate, debate is fucking healthy or like talking things yep. out is healthy. Just yep. silencing and canceling somebody because you yep. don't agree with what they say or, or you yep. think what they say isn't like the right thing, that that's fucking dangerous ground man and you know even yeah. if you're coming from the best meaning place when you when you do that like you might be like oh this guy's a fucking nazi he shouldn't be able to fucking talk exactly blah, blah. no let him talk and he'll and yeah. if, if he really is saying something stupid he's gonna dig his own fucking grave and you don't have to worry about exactly it. like but exactly you, you silencing somebody because you don't agree with them is the most un-american fucking thing there is whether it you're on the yep. left or the right and you're trying to do it for good or whatever. Like let everyone yep. have their opinions, let everyone talk their talk and then try and use it as a moment to educate or, 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 exactly. or, or debate something. And, and you might not come to it uh, to, you know, like to, you know, you might not come to a point of uh, convergence on things, but so be it, you know, you can't, you know what I mean? I don't know. Like, you know, exactly. I met people that they're so, you know, uh, the, you know, uh, like the whole Nazi shit. This guy's a Nazi because blah, 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 whoever they talk about, this guy's a Nazi. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, I know real, I know real Nazis because I personally chased them out of our fucking scene. Absolutely. Yeah. In the late 80s, you know, when, it, like, yeah. no, no one had to tout walking around like, oh, punch a Nazi, punch a Nazi. Shit exactly. just fucking happened and, and it and, fucking and, got and, off. And, 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 and then they talk about, oh, the Italian kid from the Italian neighborhood being a Nazi. No, because he says some racial shit. No, it's, you, if you go to a Spanish neighborhood, they say racist shit towards the black kid. The black neighborhood says racist shit towards the white. That don't make them um, this and that. It's the way you grow up in those neighborhoods. Then you got guys that are going out specifically to hurt somebody because their race or religion. Now, that's the problem. Yeah. yeah. Not your neighborhood banter. Yeah. Because I had personally people, I got more offended. I'd rather have you say you're a Nazi than have you say, 
Hey, yo, I'm a, fuck that Nazi shit. I got a black friend, and I know two Spanish guys that work for me. <laughs> yeah, Guess what, yeah. my friend? <laughs> I, I'd rather you say some other shit, dude. It'll make me yeah. feel no better than anything yeah, yeah. makes you look stupider. Yeah, if you, you know if, what I mean. If but you're if you're tallying up your ethnic friends in front of somebody, then yeah, yeah you you exactly. you're, you're covering up for something. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, like like people like you know um, um, when uh, uh, you know. Don't get me wrong. Again, you know when there's a, like when the Elian Gonzalez back in the day with the Cuban kid. Yeah. yeah, sure. You know people rallying the Latin people rallying, and then I would you sure I was like word that's foul blah blah blah, and then I would see like sometimes if it's white kids or other ethnic groups and they're crying. And I'm like, no, I'm glad you're on the cause, but don't act more depressed than I am. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I, you know, those are my people. I get it, but don't overdo it. Like whatever, you know, you know, there, there's a way you could tell when people are doing this shit for a bandwagon yeah, and yeah, yeah. being on a bandwagon. Or, or I'd rather have you have your own or... opinion. Yeah. You know, and I'd rather you, you know, show your, show your true colors more than being a bandwagon rider. Yeah. There's nothing worse than a band. That means you got no backbone. Forget backbone doesn't mean right or wrong, but it means you believe in what you believe in. And I'd rather you have that than you just riding it. That means you fucking got no spine. Yep. You're a jellyfish. And that shit, you know what happens? Jelly, you pick it up, it goes through your fingers like shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's yeah. the thing that, you know, I'd rather have you pick your, pick your, pick your side or like, you know, or not even pick a side, but like, tell me what you really think. Not what I want to hear. Yeah. I'd rather know what you really think. That gives me a time to assess. Yeah. Not, yeah. not, 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 not you know, don't give me what, what you think I want to hear. Cause you know, there's nothing that that's almost like more fucking, um, it's, it's more insulting. Absolutely. You know, when you tell me some shit, when like, Oh, you just telling me this because I'm in front of you with like a bunch of other ethnic dudes. <laughs> and now you're just telling me that to be like, fuck that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, like, like, you know, like be real, yep. be real. Let me, let me be the, the judge of how I want to think about, you know, the way you think or live. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, you know, that's, you know, again, you know, people just got to, it's, it's weird again. That's coming from the hardcore scene. I think, you know, also that, you know, in the early days we got to, you, you were in close quarters with different, if it was a Krishna guy, there was a Nazi guy, there was the gay guy, there was the, 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 the thug guy, there was the wigger guy. Yeah. There was, you know what I mean? You, you lived in close quarters. You all had, you all, um, 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 misfits and you all went to this one spot because this is the one place that you were able to be a misfit at. And you know what you did? I don't fuck with that guy. So, all right, I'm not going to go to that side of the club. I'm yeah. going to go here and not do that. Or you end up becoming friends with everybody. And then you learn, oh, nah, that guy's that. He's doing that for shock value. Yeah. Oh, yo, that gay dude, yo, that dude's cool. Yo, yeah. I thought he was going to be this and that. And then you learn, oh, that guy, yo, he's mad. But, yo, I like rap now. You know, that, that, that the wigger kid, yo, he put me onto some shit I never thought, you know. And then the next thing you find out, you know, again, you know, you, 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 you get to enjoy life more. Yeah. You know what I mean? Instead of like cutting shit out, you know, it's like, you know, everybody was ignorant. I was, as a kid, I was ignorant with a lot of shit. And then I, I got to travel the world and meet amazing people. And then I got to learn. And then I learned, man, I'm lucky. I'm a lucky dude to, to be um, more open-minded than I've ever been. Yeah. And then I, you start seeing how many people are closed-minded. Yeah. And then you start seeing how stupid they look. Yeah. And you're like, yo, you know, it's like, uh, I'm lucky. You know, I'm lucky to live yeah. the life I've had. And, and, and this sounds weird, but it annoys me more when people are closed minded about things that they're trying to be. I don't know how to say this. Like they're so closed minded, but their cause is like an open minded cause. If that makes sense. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's like, exactly. Dude, dude, I fuck, agree. Relax. Like, you know, like, cause here's the thing. Like I am not here to be anybody's thought police. You want to think stupid shit? Fucking go ahead. Yep. Just don't fuck with me yep. or fuck with my family or any of my friends or any of my people. That I don't have an issue with you until you do something, you know, to to violate yeah. someone that I hold dear. You know what I mean? But like yep. you can you can think all the dumb shit you want. I don't give a fuck. Don't bother me. Exactly. Like, that's your problem. That's shit going on in your head, not mine. You know what I mean? And I'm not yeah. gonna try and regulate what people think, you know, whether if it's cause cause I don't agree with them. But just like I'm not gonna get on like some righteous crusade and try and like fucking persecute people for thinking differently than me. You know what I mean? Like Yeah, yeah. Those just, are people that just wanna be part of something. Yeah. But they, they they're not trying to be a part of that something, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? 
They, yeah. they, they don't want to be a, 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 a key component to that. They just want to be part of it to be down. Yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah. like, yo, that's whack. Yeah, yeah. These, I, you know, I want you to, you know, I want you to make me think. Yeah. If you're not making me think, I'm not growing. Again, it goes back to that. Absolutely. You're not making me think I'm not growing. You're just fucking stagnant. Yeah. That shit is whack. That's how you don't grow. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. And a lot of those people are just with the 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 terms they use are like ver- social uh, peacocking or virtual signal, and they just want to look like yeah. they're righteous. And it's like, you know what, motherfucker? Yeah. I live righteous. I don't have to look at you, know, and I have to do it by just like you said. Walk the walk, don't talk the talk. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, and, exactly. Uh, and that's what that's the one thing that I loved about hardcore. And it was more in the early days, and I don't mean the early days because I don't say I'm an old school guy. I didn't yeah. go to shows. My first show was in '88, yeah. but in those you know, that time, you know, it didn't matter. You know, I always grew up with a straight edge guy, a Krishna guy. There was a gay guy around. There yeah. was a tough guy. There was the junkie. The there was the, the, you know, yeah, yeah. The, yeah the, 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 you know, they, it was all that. And guess what? It was never this, that. Sure, the whole Nazi shit had to get dealt with, of course. But there was always political people, left-wing, c- 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 crust punks. And then the skins were more on the right. But yet, it was all Puerto Rican and black skins. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And then yeah. and then now so, it became some other shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then, But the whole cool thing was, you were boys. You, you, you know, a lot of times you were friends and you mix. You're like, oh, that's punk Rob, punk rock Rob. Oh, yeah, that's skinhead Mike. Yeah. Yo, that, that you know, there's this, you know, you learn on um, that, you know, and and you all mix, like you know, from the vegetarians, the vegans, you know, that's another shit. That's always been a part of our culture, but then it became this whole vegan, um, um straight edge movement that pulled itself away from hardcore. Yeah, say like, no, you were always a part of it, but you wanted to become your own self righteous shit. Where it was like, no, we're all misfits. Yeah, man, that's what you it came wanted, down to. You you were tired. Yeah, we now you don't want to be a misfit. Now you want to be the fucking jock star yeah. of the show. That's what it became. Like, nah, that's not what this is about. I loved it. Like a dude like Toby. Toby used to be the only straight edge guy around. It was never an issue. Who would care what you ate and what you drank? Yeah. If you were cool, you were cool. It never mattered what, what your religious beefs were. Yeah, you know, I got Puerto Rican dudes that became Christians. I know Christian dudes that became Muslims. I know Muslims. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, but guess what? When, when, when we're in a bar fight, who's swinging with me? All Absolutely. of them? Then I'm down with all of them. Yeah. And you you know what's missing in the world more than anything? Because everyone's so fucking righteous now and serious about shit. Like, it, like it's like you said, man, we grew up in the punk and hardcore scene. And there was we would grew up with all kinds of people, with all kinds of different views and different things. But we could all bust balls and have a good time and fuck with each other, like. But it, it and yep. no one took it personal, like it was fun. You know what I mean? Like, oh fuck you, yep. you fucking blah blah blah, and they would fight Six back skin. and this and that, and yep. and and, and nowadays, dude, like you know, like half the shit, like you know, if I was a kid and had Twitter, like in the shit, like we were saying to each other back then, like, oh, holy oh, shit, the dude, shit. we'd we be like now fucking, each other oh holy shit, yeah, oh yeah, even now, <laughs> hey, hey, right <laughs> yeah, now, of yeah, course, yeah. it is whole. <laughs> <laughs> cancel culture or whatever yeah it's like it's are crazy. you fucking kidding me but that, that's the thing that people don't get unless they will because the lay of the land wasn't like it is now like again i talk about toby because toby brings it up and, and it's a good point with him he's like you know we busted balls the same way we busted balls on him they would bust balls on me if i was blazing and we would bust balls on the next dude for listening to fucking um um whatever whoever they were listening to and, the, and so on it's like but guess what the minute the shit went down it was all of us together when the yeah. shit counted Absolutely. And, 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 and that's just that's also i think big city you know big cities we yeah. grew up you grow up with uh, a lot of different kind of people yeah. and um people know that about me like um um freddie would say that to some people because you know i you know certain dudes I, i'll pick on them but you know in my joking way and sometimes I don't know how to stop, but it's never, if I got beef with you, I'm not going to joke on you. I'm going to snuff you. Yeah, exactly. That's the difference. Exactly, yeah, and, that's... and if I'm joking, and Freddie would tell dudes, like, some dudes would take it the wrong way when they just meet me, when I'm kind of busting balls, but, but it's because I like them. And then Freddie yeah. would be like, yo, dude, if he didn't like you, he wouldn't be talking, or he wouldn't be busting your balls. So Absolutely. don't that's, worry about that's, it. Like that's that. how you know you're good. If you're getting your balls busted, exactly. that, you know, like, people are uh, looking out for you, you know? <laughs> exactly. That comedian, um, Jackie Mason, that old comedian, yeah. he used to say it. Yo, when you can't diss your friends, then they're not your friends. 
Yeah. What, yeah. What, what fun is that when you can't buzz balls with each other? And I go, exactly. You know, like, if you people read the text messages I send people, forget <laughs> about it. <laughs> I, I'd be real. But again, also people know that, know me, that if you're cool with me, I got your back. It's on. Absolutely. I don't care, you know, yeah. how you look, your hairstyle, who you sleeping with, what you eat. Yeah. You, you know, you got my back. I got yours. That's it. Very plain and simple. That's where I'm black and white. You yeah. know what I mean? Like very simple. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, when it counts, you yeah. know, like I peel the onion when it counts, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, man. So, you know, um, I got a lot of bike guys. I got a lot of different uh, guys that, and, and gals that listen to this and, and it, is yep. people that might not be as uh, familiar with, with you individually, uh, you know, mad ball, you know, yep. I, I, you know, I'm not going to lie. Like, it's crazy. Like I see a lot of mad ball merch at like at uh, motorcycle shows and shit. Now, like, you know, there's, yep. a, there's been a big crossover between the motorcycle and, 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 and yeah. hardcore scene, like, especially in the last 10 years. But, um, tell, tell people a little bit about your background, man, and how you even got into punk and hardcore and how you, you know, linked up and, and got into mad ball and all that. Like, you know, well, you, cause there might yeah, be people, yeah, no, well, people that don't know the, 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 the Hoya rock origin yeah. story. You know what I mean? Yeah. Nah. Well, yeah. Nah. Shout out to all my biker guys because that became the next step for a lot of hardcore kids. Yeah. You know, some of them went to college and then some of them still lived out there that, that, that want to live that, you know, outlaw state of mind yeah. and became, you know, started writing, you know, that was always a part of it. You know what I mean? It's a big part of it. Yeah. What um, I tell people is I, it's, 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 it's the next step. Cause it's, it's loud, fast, yeah. dangerous, exactly you do it yourself. And it's all the shit hardcore was, you know, like it, exactly. It, it, is, and, um, it is, it is, you know? Yeah. And, and it's, it's free thinking, thinking the way you want. Um, 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 I'm also, it's very tribal, yeah. you know, like that. And like, basically I grew up, you know, and, you know, in Corona Queens, and my brother is basically, you know, I grew up with a lot of hip hop when I was a young, young kid. But in my house, I always had Black Sabbath and hardcore blasting and metal. My brother was a metalhead and, and hardcore kid. You know, he grew up all the sick of it all guys. You know, him, Lou, Armand, they all grew up when they were kids. And um, so I always had Black Sabbath in the background in my room. I'm, I had fucking rock him. And, you know, and then it got to the point where. You know, I always loved Sabbath. And then, you know, it got to a point where, you know, I was never in, I loved metal, but I never loved, I never liked long hair. I was never into like, uh, you know, earrings on that type of shit. Yeah, yeah. And then um, I remember, but I always liked metal as a sound and hardcore. And my brother was a big AF guy. So, so you, I remember, you, you must have been real stoked when fucking Run DMC came out of Rockbox. Yeah, yeah, you know, of course, but to me, I didn't even think about it like that because to me, it was seemed like just oh yeah, it's dope. They got guitars. I know guitars. Cause yeah, yeah. My yeah. brother listens to rock. It just I never even thought about it like that. What what what, what first happened was um, my brother was psyched because he's like, yo, there was a a, a a a titty magazine called New Look Magazine. It was like a low end Playboy magazine, and my brother was psyched because they had a little article on Agnostic Front. And he was so psyched because back then there was no hardcore and real publications. Yeah. And I remember looking at the picture and I remember saying, damn, these dudes look like druggies. But because <laughs> they were like Roger and Vinny, they were sitting in the backstage of CBs. You know, they were sweaty. Roger had his hair all greasy and tattoos. And I said, you know, they kind of like druggies. But I go, yo, they kind of look hard. Yeah, you know, yeah, like there was yeah. something raw about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And And then even musically, I was like, Yo, I like that shit. And then you start looking at the pictures and they weren't long haired guys. You know, they like boots and it was like they were singing about more not devil shit, but kind of street shit. shit that was kind of going on. Yeah. And I got to learn through my brother again. You know, I, I got I was lucky to have that. And I just picked up to the hardcore shit, you know, like AF and the Chromags, you know, right off the grip, you know. And then my brother went to the army and, um, I started going to shows when I was 15. My first show, I went to see, um, it was at CB's. I went to see, I think it was um, Sheer Terror and Rest in Pieces, who I loved. And I, after that, I was hooked. Yeah. I was like that. And then, you know, um, I, you know, I, something about, I loved boots. I, I, I loved the military, you know, the shaved head, you know, AF skins. And I kind of, I, I was a skin as a kid. I went, that route and not the metalhead route, but I always loved metal also. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then 
you start, you know, you're learning, you know, the thing. You know, I always love Slayer. And then you learn, oh, well, half the skin loves Slayer. Yeah. You know, and then, then you have the cro and then you start learning. And then it just became, you know, I was lucky to come up in New York when it had, I think, during the best time ever in hardcore where, you know, one, this was my weekend shows. I would see Agnostic Front, cro Leeway, Breakdown, Raw Deal, Sheer Terror, Super Touch, You The Today. You know, these were the bands playing every other week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had all, all the Judge, all Gorilla Biscuit, all the, the top bands that are on every kid's t-shirts now. That was my every other week show. Yeah, yeah. And that was, was your, that was your local show. That was your local show. Yeah, my local shows on a regular. Yeah. And so I happened to get that, and then I fell in love with that whole New York shit. It was just, just because it had that. It had a swag, but it wasn't rap metal. I never was crazy about rap and metal, yeah. rap and hardcore. But I loved when the swag came through in its own way. Sure. Like, like um, Raw Deal, Breakdown had certain tracks that it had a head bounce, but it wasn't them kicking a rap beat. Yeah. But you, I could feel the swag because I loved hip hop. And I'm like, yeah, I could bob my head to that. And then and, and fast forward, when I would write music, this was before Pro Tools and GarageBand. I would play rap videos on a video cassette, uh, right? And I would put my guitar amp right next to the TV so it was in a, in a spot where I could hear the drums from the rap song and I was able to write music to it. Yeah, yeah. I ended up writing songs like Fast Forward for Madball, like Set It Off, I wrote to a Rock Him beat because yeah. I didn't have a drum machine. So I'd listen to the Rock Him video and I'd play the guitars over it. Huh. And that became Set It Off. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so it was it, like you—it was almost you doing it in time to like to a hip hop video. Exactly, because yeah. in my head, it might have not been what what we played the exact same beat, but is that hip hop beat? Yeah, you know, yeah. ka 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 and then I start mixing it, and then when we give it to Willie, he wasn't a really a hip hop guy, but he understood groove. He would do his version of that, and boom. You got mad ball, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, but, you know, I started playing early on. I, I you know, I, I, I never planned to play bass. You know, I was sitting around with my boys. We heard some whack hardcore band on some station, WSOU in New York. And we were all sitting outside of my house drinking 40s and thinking, and I remember saying, my big mouth, I go, fuck, if this shit could go on the radio, I bet we could throw a band together right now and get on the radio. And my boy Jir at the time was, there he goes then let's start a band i said all right bet and then you know we were like okay let's start a band what you want to call it let's call it demise that was my first hardcore band yeah and then i just started i bought a bass to learn how to write music i never knew other people's music so i did it mainly to be in the band to write music not to like i was in one of those kids jamming in my room like imagining i was cliff burton or somebody <laughs> yeah, yeah you yeah, know what yeah, i mean yeah. not, there's nothing wrong with that but I basically did it because it was like, okay, yo, we got a band. Okay, that means we got to write songs. All right, so I I, I picked the bass because my brother always wanted to be a bass player, and I said, yo, if he, I, you know, you know, that's my big brother, and if he thinks it's cool, it must be cool. So I want to play bass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the only reason I chose bass. <laughs> and then, um, basically, you know, I played in my. And so, and so subliminally, you must have known you wanted to supply like the fucking low end and the fucking groove to shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, it became that. Like, you know, I was like four strings. I said it's simple enough. I was a gorilla, yeah, as yeah. it was. And then I learned that I, oh, I like the low end because I love hip hop, so I love that low end. You know, that air, that boom, yeah, bah, yeah. boom, boom. But I always loved that, and I was, I realized, I go, yo, that's my job, and I go, okay, I can feel that shit. And that, that's naturally what I think a bass player should be, somebody who follows the rhythm in that, with that type of mentality. And then we started my first band. We, we you know, we played around a little bit, but we were banned from a lot of places because wow. we were wild kids. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. we were like, there was a lot of beef and, you know, we would just wreck everywhere we would go. Like, if there was Nazis or just want to be tough guys, we would just flip and we would just, literally shut down clubs yeah yeah. and you know we had a reputation we played at uh, probably a, you know the, the amount of shows we probably played 12 shows in our existence yeah and you know some of them were backyard parties but you and, know what it's like but, the name still lives on and people are still fucking repping that shit to this day you know? yeah 
Yeah, and it was like, um, then basically, long story short, as that band was wi- winding down, um, Freddie was mo- he had moved up to New York and was hanging out. And I knew about the Madball shit because I bought the Madball 7-inch. I seen him when he was a little kid yeah. at CB's. He used to jump on stage and sing, and I always thought that was dope. I was like, yo, this kid jumps up and sings, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Then, long story short, my band was breaking up right as Roger was the original bass player for Madball. He left Madball to go work at, to go to Harley Davidson. Yeah, when he, school, went, he went to MMI. Yeah, Florida. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so when he left, Mad, Freddie had moved back to New York and they were starting Madball up, or all the AF guys. We were already boys. They knew I played bass. And they asked me, yo, you, you know, you want to fill in for a couple of shows? And I said, yeah, I guess I'll do a couple of shows. And basically, 26 years later, yeah. I'm still here. Still filling it's in. supposed to be still, just a couple of shows. Still filling in for a couple of shows? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then it became Madball, you know, and it became that. And, it's, um, and then, you know, we were lifestyle guys. We were street guys, you know what I mean? And, um, and it's funny, like, you brought up the whole bike, the whole bike lifestyle. You know, like, again, Roger, you know, yeah. it was like him, you know, they they do that road. Yeah. And it became, you know, and who doesn't like a bike? Yeah. You know what I mean? You got to be a fucking sucker to not like a bike. <laughs> you know what I mean? You got to be a guy to ride. Yeah. But, you know, I, I personally don't know how to ride a bike. I always wanted to learn. I love bikes. But, I, I, you know, and to me, anybody who had free thinking, I kind of, you know, I kind of felt them. And that will always seem like the next stepping stone for guys out of the scene was either you became a biker or you went to college, you know, went to a nine to five guy or you got into some type of yoga or health, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, type of medicine or something like these were like the lanes, some like relig- spiritual. religion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, these, these are like the next steps for people in our world. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, the the whole free thinking, make your own rules, I think, you know, the, the biker guys, you know, under, you know, understood it because they came from our world. Yeah. And a lot of bike clubs will come to our world to look at new blood. Absolutely. They you know still, I mean? do, that's why still I, do to this day. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why we also had got a lot of love from a lot of clubs, you know, and, and, and um, because one, they respected us and we always showed love. And yeah. a lot of those dudes were older dudes that came from our world. You know, yeah. and uh, and it just mixed. It's just, you know, they're like uncles. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, you know, yeah. like the same way, like like you know, vegan yoga doctors. They're uncles of ours. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like um, those are all come. That shit all spawns from you know New York, from hard not just New York, but hardcore and punk. You know, veganism, vegetarianism, um, um, um art. You know, I'm, 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 I'm bikers. Yeah. You know, that shit comes from our world. C- counter, Fucking, no, no, all, no. all kinds of counterculture shit goes hand in hand yeah. from hardcore Tattooing. and and hardcore exactly. advanced it in one way or another when hardcore kids got into that other shit and just pushed it forward. Like back in the day. That the, whole yeah, DIY day, shit, you know? Yeah. Back in the day, the guys that were bikers were military dudes that had nowhere to go to, to, to live yeah. that, or been through wild shit. And yeah. then as fast forward, the guys that came out of our wild life yeah. needed somewhere to to, to 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 live with that, you know, to know how to channel the wildness that we live through. Yeah. Hey, let's ride a bike. Let's tattoo. Let's yeah. let's work, you know, live the way we want to live. And, sure. you know, that's why I'm, you know, I'm blessed to be part of this scene because um, as, as much as there's a lot of cl- uh, closed minded thinking in our world, that the roots of it is the most open minded. Yeah. You know. But I feel like the, I feel like the closed minded shit is just and I'm not cuz I'm not romanticizing cuz I'm from the same era as you. You know, I, I and, yep. and and um I'm not rom- romanticizing it like from when we were kids, but I feel like it's way more segmented and closed minded now than it's ever been. Absolutely. Facts. And, and that's facts. Absolutely. Like, you know, and I'm not not being like, oh, back in our day shit, but it's yeah. Back in our day it was one hundred percent what you said. Like I, I remember my crew of dudes, like there was a skinhead dude, was a couple skinhead yep. dudes, there was like a fucking youth crew kid or a few youth crew yep. kids, there was a fucking yep. little punk rock commie kid, there was this kid, yep. the, the goth kid, like the weird fucking Smith kid, you know what and, I mean? And, and you know and you know who a part of the blame is? Is the straight edge scene. And not because I got anything against straight. Straight edge is a part of the hardcore scene. At one point, not the straight edge scene, but the youth crew yeah. fantasy. Because they before a hardcore kid could have been a skin. 
It could have been a hardcore punk. It could have yeah. been a hardcore straight edge kid. It all fell on the hardcore. And then it became, I remember saying, oh no, I'm going to just go to these youth crew shows. I was like, what? Yeah, what yeah. do you mean a youth crew show? Yeah. What? Oh, oh, I love straight edge bands. They just happen to be a hardcore band that's straight edge. Yeah, then yeah. it became their own world. And then it became, oh no, it, um, their bill is just youth of today, this band, this band. And you had to be all straight edge. When Before that, it would be AF, youth of today, you know, yeah. um, sheer terror. You know, yeah. when, when uh, that was the best shows. Oh, yeah. When it was a mix. Uh, yeah. You know, ask Siv, who was at all the Gorilla Biscuit shows. It was all of us, all yeah. the wild niggas. Yeah, yeah. And straight edge kids. But what happened was it started segregating, and then that made the tough guys, the, the, the guys, give them, it gave the meatheads a reason to be more meatheads. Yeah. And be like, fuck you, pussy dudes and suckers. And then it turned off, you know, dope, good people that were straight edge and had great bands, but now you had to pick a side. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. was whack. When it was never like that, it was always everybody. We were all bottom feeders. Plus, plus, you know, we were all, like I said, the hardcore scene was a septic tank, and yeah. we were all the shit that fell to the bottom and had nowhere to go. Yeah, absolutely, man. And then, and, you know, and, you know, like, you know, like, I felt like, you know, I, I was in that. You know what I mean? Like, that, I was, uh, you yep. know, but what I was going to say is that, but it also opened it up where it didn't look like a lot of the straight edge kids, like, it opened it up for like, this sounds like so close minded, but it allowed the jocks to stop coming in. <laughs> yes. Because like, nah, it cause they could identify with it because it looked like, because they looked like that. Like they were wearing like and nights and all what that it shit. Was. And then it like became, you know, like the, it stopped being just all the fucking shitty bottom feeder kids, like the fucked up kids, the damaged kids, the, you know what I mean? And then yep. it was like, then like the cool kids started getting into shit. And then it was like, oh, you know, and then blah, blah, exactly. blah. Exactly. And then it got a little watered down and got a little, um, you know, it made lost its way a little, yeah, you know? Yes. It made the meatheads be more magnified, their meatheadness. It made all the jocks magnify their fucking jockiness. And that, when the minute you magnify shit, it starts separating people more. Yeah. When it was always, it never mattered. There was Krishna Mike, there was Straight Edge Dave, there was Skinhead um, Pete, yeah. you know, everybody Crust, hung out together. Crusty, and then crusty it became, Chris, yeah, you know, like whatever. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, and it became, you know, you couldn't tell. Then it became, you know, it never mattered. It yeah. never mattered. It was just part of like, and then it became to a point where it mattered. And yeah. it was whack because I love Judge. Yeah. You know, and then bands like that. You know, Gorilla Biscuits are some of the most um, fun shows to go to. Sure. But then it became like, oh, no, you know, like, oh, you're telling me I'm going to go to a show and somebody's going to smack a cigarette out of my hand? Yeah. So, well, okay, now I'm going to turn up. It did now you're going to see the real me. Yeah, yeah. Well, it did get a little elitist, you know, and that's that's when it. Yeah. And and it wasn't everywhere, you know? but it was some places that you could see that yeah. more than others, you know, for sure. Yeah, and, and again, again, and it wasn't just the straight. It, 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 and people always tend to push that shit on the meathead guys, the tough guy shit. When it's like, you know, to be honest with you, the straight edge, that youth crew shit had a lot to do with it. Yeah, they weren't the only main reason. But the minute you go left too much, it made the people that lean right a little bit go more right. Yeah. Well, you know, then, you know, it's, a, it's, it's gravity. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And, you know, it's crazy it's, now because, like, punk and hardcore is so big and has, has like, been so co-opted by the mainstream that, you know, now there's, like, so much more shit and division going on. Like, there's, like, there's like yeah, scenes, scenes in it now that I don't even know or understand, you know? Me and, too. And I'm like, all right. There's right. scenes in it. I'm, I've been a, like, in an active hardcore band for 26 years. There's bands and scenes that these bands play for thousands of kids they're hardcore bands i never even heard of yeah and, and, and a third of those kids don't even come to our show yeah never been to our show you know yeah. and it's crazy yeah. because that that was the thing that i loved about murphy's law murphy's law is probably loved by just as many straight edge kids or used to be yeah then 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 drinkers because you know why they were an open-minded band and they showed love to everybody and straight edge kids weren't saying i can't listen to them because they have a beer song straight edge kids i used to see them jump on stage singing the beer song yeah, and yeah, loving yeah. it. Nobody shit, shit on Now, God forbid you get seen doing that. Now the straight edge community yeah, can't yeah. do that. And, and then I, the I, know, like, I, I know like, straight edge pussy can't yeah. do that. I know like life for straight edge kids that have Murphy's Law tattoos. You know what I mean? Like, of course. Again, back to Toby, he has strip Murphy's Law because he's a hardcore kid, a real hardcore kid. A real hardcore kid is, yo, everybody who reps this umbrella is down. 
Yeah, it's us against them, meaning, and yeah. them is is society in the world, like the the world that exactly. we were fighting every fucking day, or at least every week. You know what I mean? Because yeah, and because that's the way it was. We didn't I, fit I, I, you know, to me, and that's the way I liked it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, I ain't one of these old guys that hate either. I got no. love for straighters. I got love for look, alcoholics. Yeah, I got love for everybody. If you got, if you're in it for the right reason, you know, I got love for you. I, what I hate is people separating from this scene that's already. It's one of the. It's the best scene in the world, and at its best, it's the smartest, but also the small one of the smallest scenes in the world. Yeah. And it separates something that's so small, which it shouldn't be. You know what I mean? Like, and, and yeah. that's the sad part about it. Like, you know, like uh. The, the lack of unity in that part yeah. when it was like, yo, you, you know, we could buzz balls, but let's all stay on, behind the same shield. You know what yeah. I mean? And, but you know, and I, then that- I think part of that, honestly, when you really think about it is like, we were unified because we had to be, because it was that, that was yeah. it. That's, that was yeah. our world. That was our safety. Like that was yeah. our thing. Like, you know, you and your, the, 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 whatever amount of people were at a show that were like-minded in a whole city full of people. Like, you know, it's not, yeah. not a lot of people were in it. Yeah. And now it's so yep. mainstream that there's just all kinds of like, you can be the cool kid at school and, you know, have like a fucking Mohawk or whatever and be, you know, listen to fucking, you know, uh, yeah. whatever, whatever watered down thing there is like, you know, like, and, uh, and, yeah. and, and I don't want to name any band names because like, we always know people that work for some of these bands and whatever. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> but oh, cause yeah. I'm not just in the band or what, you know, or anybody's success, but it just gets people that didn't come from the same broken you know, mindset yep. and, and broken person, you know what I mean? Like that, that, so yeah, I, I remember so you didn't have called, to be as unified, you know, like, I remember a bunch of years ago, somebody being like, Oh yeah. You know, cause you guys are a tough guy. Hardcore. I said, tough guy. Hardcore. I go, no, all, all hardcore is tough. It's in the name. Yeah. Hard. Yeah. Core. Yeah. 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 And I was like, now I'm a tough guy. Hardcore. Oh, why? Cause I'll snuff you. Yeah. I know a straight edge guy or uh, or a guy who ain't about fighting, but you, you cross him, he's going to snuff you. Yeah. That makes it a tough guy. No. Or because I'm a big, intimidating looking guy. I go, that shit got corny. When it was like, no, it's in the title. Why yeah. you called it hardcore? Because yeah. it was the harder edge punk, cousin of punk, cousin of this. Yeah. It was it's, its own thing. It was the rougher. If it was straight edge, it was hardcore because it was the hard. You were more extreme in that way, but under that umbrella, we're more rougher than you know the the guy in the suit or whatever it be. That no, we're the the more, you know, we're gonna speak our mind. We're gonna tell you what we what we're thinking, not just sit back and you know that was kind of the whole shit. You know, too much sheep shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where um, you know, again, like that's what that fucked it up. I think a little bit was just a separation of that. When I'm like, no, I want all the straight edge kids. I want all the Krishna kids. I want all the meathead kids. To all just say, yo, we play, we rep the hardcore scene. That's yeah, what I want. Absolutely, man. Nah, yeah. no, nah, I'm a, just tough guy hardcore. I just listen yeah, to yeah. A, a crossover hardcore. I yeah. just, that shit is corny. Yeah, there's so you, many, you, you all, there's so many genres. I'm we like, all come from the same mother. I can't. We even, all come from the same mother. I can't even keep track of it. Beat down hardcore. This hardcore. That yeah, hardcore. it's, it's like, so right, stupid. Like, no, <laughs> we all come out of the same pussy. Of the hardcore mother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you hear know I me? Mean? We all were born from the same mom, and that was hardcore music, and that's who we should be fucking idolizing. Yeah. You know what I mean? The, 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 the whole movement as a whole, because Straight Edge has a big part to do with it. Oh, Everybody under yeah. that, that, that that umbrella has a part to do. But then the minute you start separating, it takes away from the whole, you know, the, 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 the heartbeat of the shit. You know what I mean? Like, just whack, you know? But. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I don't hate on it. There's still a lot of good people repping, you know, with the same mentality. And I, I'm seeing a new wave of new kids that are growing up kind of like in our era, yeah. being more open-minded. They're straight-edge kids. They're 16, 17, you know, loving Murphy's Law and also doing it themselves and being in bands very young. And yeah. I'm seeing a little wave of this. And, it, it, and it, it, I get amped when I see that, man. Well, I got to admit, yeah, I get excited. Yeah. And that's, that's what it's about. I mean, and you know, you know, we, we, and I've talked about this on the podcast before, you know, plenty of times and people are probably sick of it, but like when we were kids and we were getting into it, like I start, like I start going, my, I, my first show was in 85 and I was like 13 Yeah, and it was suicidal and Jerry's kids. And, and, and um, and then after that, that was you a know, classic show. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, 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 but then, you know, 
and then s- sporadically went to shows until you know it was you know it was hard to get to you know and then you know like I and as I got older and sixteen seventeen you know I could start going more more regularly but um, the the thing was is that at that time there was only a few years of history before us now yeah now like kids yeah. get into hardcore now there's fucking thirty fucking forty years of history to get it get involved yeah in. and the the thing that I love about this more than anything is that there's so many lifers still around that are still doing it, that are still involved. So you can go, you can go see some band that, and and it's a kid band and I, you know, I'm not taking nothing from it. It's like, they got their own scene. They got their own thing. But like I said, there's a band that will play that we don't know, but that'll draw like 1500 kids. And yep. then the next night you can go to Agnostic Front, who's been doing it since fucking eighty one. You know what yep. I mean? And and, yep. and it gets me a little bummed out though when those kids yes. from that show with fifteen hundred kids are at the AF show because I'm like, you should be you know learning f- yes. from your history. Like I would have loved to have seen like SSD and some other hold bands that I, that I didn't get to see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can hold up. Yeah, yeah no, my alarm went off. That's all right. No, that's all right. No, yeah, yeah no, I, I, I believe me, I'm on stage. And witnessing that firsthand when we're playing for a hundred kids sometimes, and there's a kid, a new band that just came out and plays the week before and has fifteen hundred. Yeah, and and they might even have an inf- big influence. We might be a big influence of theirs, but the kids just don't follow the history yeah. like like our era did. You know, it got lost in the wash. Where showing love to your the, the Godfather, not that we're the Godfathers, but the AFs, the Murphy's Laws, the yeah. fucking, you know, the classics. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, those guys, that, you know, we're seeing, like, this is our Black Sabbath. This is our Led Zeppelin. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, and people are, need to show them the love and respect like like those bands still get. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, why, why the fuck these niggas aren't getting music awards? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it don't got to be for just record sales, but, like, Achievement awards, yo. I was gonna say lifetime achievement in, awards, yeah. Yeah, you know, how AF doesn't have that shit? How does even the Chromax when have these dudes in these biggest bands ever? Foo oh. Fighters, Guns N' Roses, have these dudes. You Metallica, they all show love to Hawk, you know, AF yeah. and the Chromax and this band and that band. But in the music scene, they're not, you know, hardcore people aren't let in like that. Yeah, you know, it's like it's it's whack, but. You know, I, I'm psyched for that, that that whole AF documentary that I think opened up the people's eyes that yo, this is a real scene. Yeah. You know, what has a lot of cred and and um, a lot of um, a lot of soul, more yeah. soul than what people think is just crazy music with crazy hairstyles. You know what I mean? And we influence not me, but our world, our scene influenced a lot of mainstream music, a lot. Oh yeah, yeah, and, and you, you know, know what? what? I mean? And then people. I mean, Ian was just on, um, the, you know, Ian, who, yeah, yeah, who, who yeah, made yeah. it, he, he was just on. And yeah, yeah, I heard that one, yeah. He's an old friend, and, you know, not only was it that, but it was like, it was a relatable story that you didn't have to give a shit about punk rock or hardcore to, yeah. to, to because it was a human story, and yeah. but it legitimized <clears throat> all that shit, like, you know, like, my father was cool, like, he didn't. Like my yeah. father was the dude that like was going to see like cream at like the local like the same club I'd go yeah, to to go see like fucking Agnostic Front. He 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 saw yeah, cream yeah. and like his boy was the drummer for Jimi Hendrix when Jim when it was Jimi yeah. Hendrix in the Blue Flame. So he didn't yeah, he didn't so. know punk or hardcore, but he was cool. Like but he that. got it. He got he got like the music and the scene of it. You yep. know what I mean? And and uh, yep. But like you know him being a you know someone seeing that movie like their parents could now have a new new. Yes. Uh, appreciation for hardcore in the scene and what it means to people because yep. it's a human story about two guys that have endured and you know yes. their friendship is endured but it's centered on the music too you know and so it, it, it was done very well and the angle was perfect that you know it showed you know it, it's a story that you didn't have to just be into the music to, to, to enjoy the story yeah. and the stories just intertwined with our scene and you know and what, what the accomplishments and what those guys did you know, and it was shot. You know, I think the angle with the the, the, the the friendship. Exactly. You know how many people, including myself, that was something you could finally show your parents and they would get it. Yeah, that's you what, I, what mean? I mean. Yeah, exactly. They'd be like, oh, shit, yeah, all right. That all yeah, makes sense. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's great. And they'd that's be like. I think it was important. And again, what did it take somebody from our scene to do it? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, 
to do it right. Our yeah. generation are the guys making moves that are going to push that shit to the next generation. You know what I mean? To the next level. Like, guys in politics. We have hardcore dudes in politics. There's hard, hardcore guys in law enforcement. There's hardcore... Hopefully, these people will start doing shit the right way. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, and that's what we need. Our people in there. You know, we wrote a record, Infiltrate the System, for people like that. Our people getting into big positions with this mentality. If everybody was a hardcore kid, man, we'd have a different world. Oh, absolutely. We'd have a better world. Yeah, because, I mean, we, we were just reared on fucking respect, fucking, like, just yep. general code shit like that like, like yeah. i don't i don't want to say like street code or man code because you know because because yeah. women live by it too but honor absolutely honor like loyalty yeah. respect like like repping you know like you know and and being about very it, like. tribal repping your tribe at all costs no matter everybody who slept in the hut you had yeah. their back exactly. and that's how it should be no matter who it was yeah girl guy this that whatever we live yeah you if you if you if you slept in that hut you were part of it. And that's what yeah. I think guys like Eno did the movie, you know, guys like, you know, we got friends that are again, law enforcement and politics and, you know, um, you know, and, and every angle, you know, from guys at biker clubs and by whatever people live in the 1% of life, people on the both sides of the law, you know, when you meet a hardcore kid, they always going to meet in the middle because they get it. Yeah. They get it. You know, you know what I mean? And they have seen it all. I, you know what I mean? That's the special thing about our world. You know, yeah. we're, we're lucky guys to to be where we're from. Oh, I always, I, I, I say it every day, you, you know, but the thing is, is I think it's why some of that's a little lost now is that, and I'm not this, I'm not, you know, I'm talking in generalizations now, but this is just like, from what I see, the world was a different place when we were younger and we were bonding. Absolutely. Like, like that's true, literally true. like had to fight. Yeah almost daily yeah you know what i mean and yeah. and uh like really fight like fight you know what i mean and, and and you know the world isn't like that now so i don't that's why i don't think it's you know things are as strong you know what I, mean? I don't know like, yeah you and, know that that's true and this is where i go back to the whole the old mentality the old um old world thinking comes into play if you treat the elders and respect them and what they say you would be learning from them you know what I mean? But the older people aren't put on a pedestal no more like that because everybody wants to be heard for their own. Now, not everybody wants to be heard for themselves and not listening. They just want to talk yeah. about what they're about. They don't want to listen. Yeah, yeah. And that's where you lose. You don't learn. And that's the problem. Now there's too many outlets for people to voice their opinion. When they're, Yeah, voice your opinion. But why don't you listen to the older guys first yeah, yeah. who've been through shit yeah. and learn about how they got there, if you like it or not. And it may change, you know, Listen, then talk. You know, our parents used to tell us that. Shut oh, yeah. up and listen. Absolutely. Then talk. Yeah. Well, they, they, they were right. And that's yeah. what I think. That If people did that, it would be things would be better. But, yeah, it's definitely a different world now for sure, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I get why, like we were talking earlier, like a lot of the motorcycle clubs try and recruit out of the hardcore scene because, like, that's yeah. like the last vestige of where people are, like, of that type of yeah. mindset. You know what I mean? I don't see that yeah. kind of anywhere. I mean, military, you know, maybe. And, 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 yep. and, and, and that's hardcore. it. And even then, yeah, exactly. And that's what it was. That's what it always was. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where are you going to go? You're going to go to the people that were outcasts, the people who had to fight for their way of thinking. Yep. They need people that have strong values in that way. And, okay, and that'll, back look, it up, to, and that'll back it up. Exactly. Yeah. At all costs. Exactly. And that's where there'd always be a connection with that, you know, the outlaw lifestyle. Yeah. And that all became mainstream tattoos, getting a bike, you know, getting tattooed, um, cutting your shorts, shaving your head, yeah. you know, saying that you mosh. It all became <laughs> really, you know, yeah. I don't got a beef for shit getting big, but it no. became very like um, buzzwordy. Yeah. You know, like, you know, it became cool to say, yeah, I'm a biker. Yeah, I'm a hardcore guy. Yeah, I mosh. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, yeah, I got a tattoo. No tattoos, but one on my neck and on my yeah. hand. No, you know, yeah, it's yeah. like, became like, yeah. you know, it, it wasn't, you know, <laughs> I've you talked about, earn all those things. Yeah, I've talked about that with tattoo guys on this podcast, too. I'm like, where the fuck are these motherfuckers coming from? Their first tattoos on their fucking throat or their fucking hands. Like, we only did that when there was no other room. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, you, you had to earn your way. Yeah. It started on my arm, then my body, and then you got sleeves, and then you went exactly. It's like you kind of earned it. You wouldn't just show up like that 
Yeah. Like, and you couldn't even, you know, you it was a, it was even harder to get tattooed. It was a yeah. different world. Yeah. Again, I, I'm not one of those old guys in my day. That yeah. type of shit either. I don't hate. No. But yeah, definitely different world we live in. You know what I but, mean? But uh, you know, and the other thing is having your neck or throat tattooed in like 1989. Was way different yeah. than having it done in 2020. Hell yeah. 1989, Hell you were yeah. like, you do not step to that motherfucker right there. That, you know what I mean? There wasn't a lot of fucking neck and throat tattoos back then. You know what I mean? It was, uh, yeah. It was, it was a different, uh, different. So, yeah. So, that's the problem. Like, the first dudes that I saw that were face tattooed with all the Detroit crew, Dougie and all the yeah, CQIC yeah. guys. You know, it was them and then, like, probably a couple prison dudes. Yeah. And then I'm like, and when, and when you saw that, you know that was CTYC guys are serious guys. Now, now you got a bunch of chumps with their fucking face tattoos and fangs in their mouth. Yeah, fucking, yeah, yeah. And bullshit. And then now the, the guy who has the, the sweater and the nerd, he's the guy who'll fuck you up. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like, because like, uh, he's been doing uh, 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 jujitsu for a few years. And exactly, fucking... jujitsu and yoga. Yeah. And he's fucking got abs because he's a vegan. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, it's like, so it's like, yeah, the, the, you know, a different world. Yeah. You know, everybody at the end of the day, with his heart in our world, everybody's still accepted. But you, people, got to come in with the open mind and not hate on nobody for the Absolutely. way they live. And if they did that, we'd be in a better place. Yeah, man. And, and I always say too, like, if you're gonna come in any of these scenes, man, show it the respect and love that these. And I'm not talking about individual people i'm talking about like yeah like if you go the history if, if you're going to get into a scene like oh like you're into punk or hardcore and stuff and you start going to shows and stuff fucking love it and fucking respect it like you know or motorcycles yep. or whatever and you yep. know don't just be a fucking you know or and if you are a tourist then still show it the proper respect don't overstep your absolutely. bounds absolutely you know if you're just a tourist that's cool it. no no one's gonna fuck with you but fucking respect it and don't overstep and and, and don't don't overstep your role you know what i mean exactly all they gotta do is respect the culture right and, and show love to the to the, the godfathers and the godmothers yeah that's what people gotta do and that's how you should be in life respect absolutely. your elders and you can learn a lot. And then when you become that older person, you're going to want that same respect. Yeah. And then the next generation gets smarter and stronger. People and then, just got to start thinking like that. And it's two ways, too, because when, when you're an elder in a world, you should also respect the new shit coming up. You know what I mean? And, and Absolutely, yeah. You can't be a bitter old man because yeah. nobody likes a bitter no, old man. No, no. And I, and, I, and I swear to myself, I'd never be that guy. Yeah. Because, you know, again, I like like I, I, I'm from that stigma school. Stigma always in AF. They show love to the youth because they always knew that's the new wave. That's the the new the, the, the new way of thinking. They're open minded. They they're not set in their ways yet. Yeah. They're very open, you know. And they always show love to the young kids. And I learned from them. I come from them. Yeah, I'm their DNA. You know what I mean? And yeah. I'm glad because those are the godfathers, and those dudes should be. And they and they the right way. They came up the right way when when they were shitted on, and our generation. I like to think that our generation helped carry that that mentality and and their legacy on, yeah. and and we try to school the next generation the same way. You know, we're still trying to do that every time we we play or we do anything. You know, we're trying to put on the next wave of kids to try to think like we think. I think like we think, but understand where we came from and why yeah. we came from it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, they don't got to do the same shit. They just got to understand and respect the world that, that, that we came from and then carry some of those traditions and, and, and core values onto their world because their world's a different world than we grew up in. You know what I mean? So exactly. We're not going to so fully exactly, understand exactly. The, the, the shit they go through. And you yep. know, like we were fist fighting. These dudes are dealing with like cyber bullying. We never dealt with that. Yep. You know what I mean? I, yep. You know, and gals, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Uh, I know no, for sure, and you know, I you know, I still got faith, and in and in in in, you know, it's never going to be like the same way as we were when we were kids. But I got faith that all we could do is keep living and keep trying to school the next generation. Yeah, and I, you know, we, we also a lot of these older guys don't give these young kids ch a chance to yeah. get schooled and whatever, and and you can't that nothing works like that either. No, you know what no, I mean? no, that's we got, what I mean. You know, you know, you. It takes somebody to teach and somebody to listen. It takes two. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and man. that's all we need. We need that, and we just got to keep working at it. And, you know, as long as we're alive, you know, we're going to fly that flag. 
Absolutely. Like we've been do. doing, you know, and, and that's all we could do. And, and it's, it's, we don't, we don't know any other way. And I'm, I know. And I'm, and I'm proud. I'm yeah. proud to be where I'm from and how I am. And it, and it all has to do with this team. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And so, that's what I mean is like, I've, there's nothing that I'm involved with other than this and in, in like yeah. motorcycles too, but where people yeah. have been, you know, cause now we're of an age where, you know, it's been around 30, 40 years, but there's still, I go to shows no matter where, like I go to a show in Providence, I go to a show in Boston, go to a show in New York. There's still dudes that have been, that I saw at shows 30 years ago. Yep. And it's uh, fucking yeah, yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Oh, you know, almost 30 years ago, or whatever, you know what I mean? And, yeah. No, hell yeah. You know, it feels awesome. good. Exactly. There's will be some exactly. new kids. Like, there's all these other people, but you'll see it. Even dude. we're playing shows. You know how many kids times I, I've got, I met kids throughout the years that I've played since I've been playing so long. They came as kids. Yeah. I saw them come with their girlfriends. I saw them come with their pregnant girlfriends. I see them coming with their kids and now I see their kids in band. Yeah. I got to see generations come up and I'm glad that, you know, not me personally, but all, our wave of bands and, and, and way of thinking that these kids are going to get schooling that they've never got, that they're, that they're, it, the gems. We have a lot of gems to give people on the history of our world. You know what I mean? And, and it and it's a a rich history that um we can't lose. Just put it like that. No, absolutely not, man. So, um, fucking, you know, we talked about the bands. We talked about your podcast. We didn't talk about Casa de Rock. Uh, let people yeah. know a little bit more what's going on with that. I mean, yeah, and, and everybody it's out there. It's funny that you mentioned it. I'm not just saying that, but like when you said as this was going on and the Corona was going on, I know bands weren't going and doing shit. So like I tried to like support all my friends and even people yeah. that are sponsors. Like and I made orders with different people and dude, yep. I, when I got your package and there was so much extra shit in it, I was like, oh fuck yeah. I was like, yeah. I tried to fly under the radar. I didn't tell you I was ordering shit or whatever. No, I know, but I, I, know. Get, I get the word on what names are who's what. You know, mm. I, you know, again, I got to yeah. lace my peep. Yeah. But no, no um, you know, everything we do ourselves, you know, I do everything myself, you know, everything we, we do in-house, Casa the Rock dot com. I do. I've been doing merch, you know, my own my own ideas with my boy, Steven. You know, he helps me yeah. design shit and we do everything at the crib and everything is, you know, ideas that we have. Because, again, I like being creative and it's another again, like I said, this hardcore shit ain't a big money maker thing. Yeah, yeah. But um, we also don't just ask to give us. You know, we, we, we like to give something and, you know, we like to put out a product that hopefully people like and it also helps support the movement and support the band and support, you know, what I do. And, um, yeah. yeah, we do a lot of shit. We do, you know, I do limited runs of everything we do. You know, um, CasaTheRock.com, again, from, from the mail orders all come out of our houses. The ideas are all done by us, by, you know, me, you know, in the house. You know, we're, we're doing the print and we're putting the shit in bags. You know, it's family, DIY, 100% for quality shit. Yeah. And it, it's basically, you know, it's been helping us out through these times. And, you know, everybody out there, go cop some merch. You know, everything goes, you know, into making more merch. You know, nobody's making millions off this shit. But, you know, it's definitely helping me get through, you know, get through the times a little bit. And also helps me keep putting out merchandise and stuff. Yeah. You know, we got shit for girls, guys, cats. We're coming out with a bunch of new shit. We're doing some fucking aprons for all you cook motherfuckers out yeah. there. Hey, you know, yeah, that's so, you like, know. that's like the big thing we were talking. You know, when we were talking off mic or earlier, we were talking about bowers and that. Like hardcore yeah. chefs, dude. There's so many chefs now that are like old yeah. hardcore dudes that are like big name yeah. chefs now. It's fucking bananas. Absolutely. Yeah. Shout out to Tyler at Crossroads in California and Vlad yeah. at oh, you know, OG Grill. And but yeah, no, for sure. You know what I mean? And um. And yeah, yeah, it's just basically a fa family run operation, you know, that, that goes right back into, you know, doing what we do it helps put, you know, go support the podcast. You know, we're going to have a Patreon thing because you know how that is. It costs money to put shit up on some oh, of yeah. these uh, formats and, you know, um, you know, um, I, I, nobody's trying to live off of it, but, you know, help pay the cost for putting out podcasts and putting out merchandise and, you know, we like being creative and, you know, the people that are working are supporting the scene by supporting not just me, but like 
all our podcasts and all our merch endeavors and all that shit. So, Absolutely. but yeah, you know, we have, mer- I got, you know, look out for Casa Rock dot com. Look out for the smoking word. Look out for Madball. I got a new band called True Union. Not a hardcore band, but you could hear the hardcore attitude. It's kind of like if ACDC had James Brown's drummer. It's on some shit like that. Nice. And um, just doing, you know, being creative. I hope to drop that later on in the year. Again, everything I do, I do it in house. Like. You know, the the music for my podcast was done by Stress the White Boy. Shout out to Stress. You know, um my boy Steven helps me with my designs when 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 you know, everything we do in house. We try to use our boys, people from our world. Yeah. You know, and whenever we could give work to somebody, if I can't do it, I point them to where they could get it, you know, and I try to keep everything in our world. You know what I mean? And Absolutely. Just giving back to what gave to us and you know we got to support this shit we can't just talk about it you know what i mean so 100 just keeping busy but look out for all that shit you know yeah. we got a bunch of podcasts in our family you know your podcast danny diablo's podcast you know fucking um fucking who else lord willing got a pie everybody yeah. needs support go buy merch you know metallica i love metallica but they got enough money Fuck buying a Metallica or a Slipknot shirt. Yeah, yeah, go yeah. buy a Madball shirt. Go buy a Scarhead shirt. Yeah. Go buy a fucking, you know what I mean? Go buy, yeah. you know, support the movement. Go buy a Merthe you know, shirt. And, um, a Merthe, yeah, of course. Shout out to them. I'm going to have them on. Shout out to Big Chris. And I'm, you know, doing that thing, killing it. And again, you know, we're doing, a, I'm doing a, a Casa collab with fucking, well, America 2 and MQ. So look out for that. Fuck yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so um, MQ. If you don't you know, know uh, if you don't know, just graffiti history. Like MQ, fucking ruler in the fucking graffiti. Scene. Yeah, MQ the king. Just put it like that. The one man gang. My brother since I'm fucking literally fucking eight years old, and worldwide he's one of the illest. He's the illest. He's doing a lot of fucking merch. A lot of his sticker game is crazy. Yeah. Look out for the Amerta, Casa the Rock, MQ collab, sticker collab coming out. We got a lot of shit working, so everybody look out for that shit and support. Support fucking your podcast. Not just support it, but you got, I want everybody to know you got to subscribe and you got to fucking like this shit. That's the way this world works. Yeah, leave comments. So we can all keep doing. Yeah. Leave comments. We all got to invest time. If you got an hour, two hours to listen to shit, you got five minutes to fucking hit the like button and write, yo, this shit is dope. And that's all you got to do. You know this shit's I mean? free. Like, I pay to put it exactly. up. Exactly. You know what I mean? And, exactly. And, and, and uh, Simple. And, 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 you know, I definitely got to take time out to thank real quick as we're going through this because, you know, made me think, <laughs> like, my boy Jay Cerrito with High Jinx Apparel and, 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 like, the dudes in the Rumblers and all this, and motherfuckers yeah. that have just sent money just to support, like, not even, like, yeah, you know, like, uh, yeah. like, like not even like you know onboard sponsors and stuff just people that have donated to like be like oh man i dig what you do you've given me so many hours of like uh entertainment yeah. and shit i'm into like you know yep. I, I never asked that's fucking bananas bro like like it, it, it's yeah. very humbling and 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 cool but and i'm not asking for that but you know i'm just saying like you know you know everything go- helps because this shit all costs money yeah you know microphones oh yeah phone time you know, editing, yeah. putting the shit up on these formats, yeah. you know, exactly, you know. And you, you as know, you know, um, like just it, hosting it, and especially we got a three hour yeah. conversation and I do four of those yep. a month. That's a lot of money in hosting to put it up yeah, on the all the sites. Yeah, same thing with me. Yeah. You know, I, I do everything out of pocket now, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, the, uh, doing that, you know, because I wanted to do something. I wanted to be creative. I wanted to also, you know, build this shit and, 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 also, we're giving something for something. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's the way to support. If, you, if you're if you working, support somebody. If it ain't me, it's you. Support yeah. somebody doing something that keeps you entertained. Yeah, So, absolutely. you know what I mean? That, that, you know, that's how we, we got to do this shit. And we just got to keep building. And, you know, yeah. shout out to everybody looking out and everybody, you know, keeping the movement alive and all that shit. 
Fuck yeah, man. And 100%, I'm going to reiterate because it's important. I've said this on many podcasts. If you're lucky enough to have kept your job or got like the yeah. super unemployment or this and that, or like yep. I know a lot of people, their jobs are just paying them even though they're off. You know what I mean? Yep. Like spread some yep. of that around. Go buy some Madball merch because these bands, like, you know, yes. any bands that you love, but especially like Madball, they, they fucking rep, dude. Like, and they've been repping for, for decades and decades yes. and they're still in this. And, and, and like you said, no one's getting rich off this like you know they're doing oh it. yeah like everyone could be making better decisions financially than doing this you know what i mean yeah <laughs> okay, i'm not Facts, saying it, exactly. I'm not saying it in a shitty way it's just it what it is what it is well everyone's got a mindset where we're going to win at whatever we do like if we went into st yep. the stock markets or this and that we would all do well but we do this because we love yep. it and if you love it and you're doing well fucking then support it because you know what i mean so exactly. go buy that mad ball yeah. shirt if you're yes. into anything that me and hoya talked about today go to casa and buy a shirt man because it, it's a exactly. visual it's a visual Represent, representation of everything we just fucking talked about for the last couple of hours. And Absolutely, and hardcore doesn't come with royalties. For no, everybody hell who no. might think something different. Yeah, right yeah. now, if it wasn't for my brother working and the, 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 my merch thing, you know, I, I would be fucking robbing banks right now, yeah. and I get away with it because I could wear a mask legally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, not worry I, about. I, it. I was literally in the bank the other day, strapped with a mask on, saying, "Man, <laughs> you're like, like this uh, is yeah, life." I'm like literally just, amazing. I'm just putting money in the bank right now. I'm not like you yeah, know, exactly. like I feel like, I'm, but uh, but yeah, and you know what it is too is like you know a lot of times people see pictures of like Madball playing a European festival. They see you in front yeah. of fourteen thousand people. They must yeah. be like, "Oh, these dudes are rich rock stars." And yeah, like exactly. That. It's like like they play like 10 of those shows and then they pay 400 club dates like yeah, so you know yeah, what i mean exactly <laughs> and they also don't know that headlining that one show in metallica that yeah. we just happened to yeah, go yeah, on yeah, yeah, yeah. and we're getting less money than playing a fucking show a club show yeah. that we would play Absolutely. you know what i mean and they yeah. don't understand there's no nobody's uh, I, got, I don't see a royalty check or nothing we yeah. make our money from playing and guess what i haven't played in almost since almost a year yeah it's gonna be you know since march or whatever yeah. and again I'm not crying or nothing. I'm still staying creative, but everybody out there, support the CasaTheRock.com, support the Smoking Word, support your podcast, support everybody out there. So how about this? Support anybody who's doing something out there that's helping you get through these times. Absolutely. Plain and simple. And, and, you know? and even before this, if there's like a club or a venue or a bar and they're not, you know, Mad exactly. shit's closing. Support local Mad family businesses, yeah. small businesses. Fact. Everybody, not just us, everybody from the, the the bartender to the waiter. So everybody needs help during these times. If they didn't, they wouldn't be working. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yep. you know, everybody got, you know, now it's time. You know, if you're lucky, like you say, lucky to be working, you know, sh show love. If that's the way the world works. You give, you get. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, because you know what? No one else is looking. We we look out for each other. No one's looking out for us. You don't yep. don't get yourself twisted. No fucking uh, uh, no fucking uh, politician, whether they they got a D or an R after the name, is really looking after you and me. They're looking after their interests yep. and big corporations that are that are uh, that got their uh, yep. their lobbyists and everything working on the scenes. They're not looking out for any of us. So you, we look out exactly. for each other. We don't need them fucking and uh, support each support other. We, we all get through this. Yeah. Support the small businesses, support family business. You know, we come from a family mentality and a lot of good people been supporting and we need people to keep doing that. And even when shit gets better, support anybody who's being creative, anybody repping your, your, your way of thinking. Yep. That's what we got to do. And again, we're, we're going to wave the flag for this shit to the day we're in the grave. 100%. So, but, but you know, like you said, Metallica and uh, Walmart have enough money. Support, support, support the, the, the yes. small independent guys. <laughs> yeah, go to Truth if you need your muffler. Muff. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you, exactly. You need, you need a t yeah, exactly. That's you need some handlebars or something for your bike. Give me a call. You, I, you need a cool exactly. T-shirt. Give Hoya a call. Exactly. Oh, give me Hit a call. Me we got some exactly. shirts too. Yeah, but you know. Yeah, we'll make it happen. We'll point you to where we where you gotta go. So absolutely for, for sure. Absolutely. But hey, man, it was fucking great having you on, and it was it was a good talk, and 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 I think uh, I I hope uh, some people get some. I I I don't even saying I hope. I know some people get some shit out of this, man. So it was always a pleasure. Yeah. And uh, it was, you know what's up. Absolutely, it was good talking in in this format too, you know, and uh, and uh, yeah, hell yeah, and it's good, you know. Hopefully, we can see each other in fucking person soon again. 
Once yeah. we could move a little bit yeah. around the state a little more, I'm planning to make a visit. I talked to KO, you know, shout out to KO and all my people up in the mass area. Absolutely. But um, I want to, I want to pay, I want to start paying people a visit because I can honestly say I miss being around the people I love and the people I hate even. I need to be around more humans. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> but, um, dude. You know, I know, yes, and, 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 and you know, we've we've missed two of our, you know, we've missed like our big kind of annual event where all yep. with we you know where the gorillas run free you know and and uh out of yeah. the cages and uh and uh from all over the country but you know uh, yeah i can't wait for shit to kind of get back to some semblance of, uh, of normalcy and i i yep. hope i hope a lot of the venues we all love and respect and have enjoyed through the years make it through this and uh because i know i've you know i know a lot of them in boston are closing right now it's scaring the shit out of me i don't you know yeah and, and you know i know We'll always persevere. Hopefully, some shit goes on. Uh, commercial real estate gets, starts getting cheap, and then some like more motherfuckers like us can buy some of it up yeah. and do our own shit. Because we'll always have shows no matter what. I don't care. I'll do them in the exactly. back of Chopper Head. I don't give a fuck. Like yeah, I'll do them exactly. in my shop. We're gonna make the, you know we're like cockroaches. <laughs> yeah. You ain't gonna kill us. You know no, what I mean? No. We're gonna make it happen one way or another. But Absolutely. no, but it's good. I'm glad. Shout out to everybody. Shout out to everybody supporting the movement. And hopefully I get to see you guys, everybody, soon. Absolutely. And let me know when this shit drops, and we're going to spread the word. Fuck yeah, brother. I will talk to you soon, man. Let me uh, let me shut this off. Again, thank you so much for coming on today. Yeah, nah, you know what's up, nigga. Let me know when it drops, and we'll start blasting it everywhere and all that shit, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely.